and we are live okay hello everybody so um, let's uh, see our face so we are pleased and to, uh, we are live we are pleased okay. to invite hello, everybody um, so um, some glimpse and yes. uh, i already made this uh, presentation uh, about uh, computers uh, setup uh, but in french and so i was waiting uh, tom to join us for the for the live in English, because I think there is uh, none better than him to uh, explain us a bit uh, some theoretical things about uh, the best computer setups. And um, we have Maxim with us. So yeah, hello. He will uh, actually uh, actually take all your questions. So you can uh, you're free to uh, ask any questions on the live chat, and he will uh, note all of them, and he will ask them in a second part. And so before uh, starting, so you can see... Hey, hey, man. We, we, yeah. we have an echo. There is an echo? Yeah, people say that we have an echo. Ooh. How? Oh. Um. Um, do you have headphones, Tom? Yeah, I have a headphones. I have to. Everybody have a headphone. That's kind of strange. Is there still an echo right now? I don't hear anything. Yeah. Okay. And the sound is pretty good for me. Yeah, you tell me, uh, Max, on the return. Okay. So, no echo here. So maybe one guy uh, add echo and. Okay. Hopefully it's the, it's gone. Okay. So, uh, so you can see a li little bit the chapters that we will uh, talk about. Okay. Um, I'll need to check that. And uh, in the meanwhile, I would like uh, Tom to introduce himself. So for the people who don't know him, you can uh, you can know a bit more about him. So, hello guys, my name is Tom Glims. Um, actually, real name is Thomas Rutkowskis, but to make it more simple for others to remind, and it's shortened quite a, quite a bit, um, I started GPU journey uh, quite a while ago, I think it was 10 years or so, with testing V-Ray RT, and I jumped on some of the first versions of Octane Render. Since then, I made a lot of mistakes building my own builds, and I thought that this is the thing uh, that I can help others in community. And for some reason, some nicknames and the like Hardway Guru <laughs> stick to me. And to this day, I end up being pretty helpful in community, especially for newcomers to solve their GPU issues. And I actually work a bit with Auto as well, helping them with community side of things. So in a nutshell, my brief introduction would end there so if you want to ask something just feel free to do that yeah i want to tell myself uh, as you remember that uh, yeah three years ago when i jumped myself on octane he was the first person i talked to and i was uh, still on the high mac and i guess i was like a bit lost about what to choose and uh, i contacted him on the forum and very nicely he uh, a bit uh, helped me to understand what i need to take as a, as parts that's why he's very legit this uh, this time to uh, to be on this talk with us and talk about um, PC configs and hopefully all we are going to say today is going to help you on your own uh, hardware setups. So I will try my best. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that will be fun. So uh, the first thing we are going to talk today is the GPU because uh, this uh, conversation is really for the people who want to do GPU renders. Okay, so. Um, that's really our first thing and then we will evolve to the uh, other components and uh, we will briefly talk about the drivers and uh, the few uh, new things about um, rndr which is uh, a new th uh, new stuff by uh, otoy and as well yes. later i have about 10 um, 10 advice for you to uh, sa make big savings when you buy your your graphic cards and components so let's get started so of course, there is a few things to consider, and for us, it's a bit difficult to address ourselves to everybody because you may be an amateur, a student, a freelance, a studio, and in which case you have different uh, objectives, different uh, money also, different budget, and um, that also will change your expectation. Also, you could be only looking to make still frames or animation, and it could be your first workstation, or it could be just an, another render node. And uh, it depends, obviously, the number of objects you use, the number of polygons, number of uh, materials, and uh, all of that comes together with the noise of the machine, its temperature, and the space it takes. Okay, so we're going to make it as clear as possible, but this is something that uh, 
So for people who uh, asked my, uh, ask me, uh, this is my own setups, okay? So I've got three computers, each of them have uh, between three and uh, four graphic cards. So for those interested, you can see here what it's about and uh, actual Octane bench po points that it gives. And a quick uh, tip, avoid neons in your computer because if you plan to sleep in the same room, uh, that's a very bad idea to have neons <laughs> inside. Or if you wander by night, you're not going to be able to sleep. So we can directly go to the next thing. So about the number of GPU, uh, Tom, please uh, correct me anytime and uh, don't hesitate to jump uh, sure. say something. Um, so what I can recommend you is that the if you want if you work with just one graphic card and this is your definitely the, the only one you have in your computer it's something to avoid because you're going quickly to reach uh, some limits because when you wander and only have one card obviously your even your mouse is going to lag uh, because all the task is taken by octane so i would say that can the start I, huh? can i mention one thing yeah, of course uh, Actually, one card setup is not so bad of a deal, especially if you're if you're a new user and trying to save a bit of money. Um, most of motherboards, especially like lower end uh, boards with uh, let's say consumer level CPUs, like we're talking quad cores and such, uh, some of them have integrated graphics and. If you have only one GPU, you can run your screen from integrated graphics uh, that is going to handle like basic tasks. And even if you are like rendering 100% in Octane Render on your GPU, you will still have a possibility to have a fluid interface without any issues. So sometimes like one, one GPU setup might be a bit laggy, as you said, and you might need to lower the priority of GPU, uh, meaning that you need to give some resources for for your screen and for other tasks but using something like in build gpu that a lot of guys who who have pretty powerful computers sometimes even dismiss and they might have this functionality but they might never use it is actually quite a good thing you can plug your screen into motherboard uh, power from inbuilt graphic cards on your cpu and render everything on discrete gpus which is kind of neat idea that saves quite a lot of money and gives you a bit of freedom. Yeah, but I think you maybe don't see the real-time board because uh, the starter is actually what I, yeah. uh, I, I put in like a picture of that is when you have like yeah. the integrated graphic card, integrated uh, graphic chip on the CPU or motherboard. And that's actually mm -hmm. the starter thing. The thing to avoid is if we have one card and no graphic chip, because then of course yeah. it, it's the only thing that uh, your computer is uh, using to to show the interface. So yeah, of yeah. course the starter thing is, uh, and it, it also happened on the laptop. Many laptops have like a quadro or something and they have a, a graphic chip on the CPU or, or the board. And uh, yeah, that's definitely a good thing. It's, uh, I think it's like the, you cannot do less than that. Yeah. And uh, of course, so as you grow uh, the number of cards, it becomes more and more uh, pricey but also uh, the result is also <laughs> better and better. And um, I would say that uh, for an illustrator, uh, this uh, thing with the starter kits, let's say like with this uh, graphic chip on the CPU or motherboard is the, definitely like uh, the starter. And uh, as you grow also uh, in terms of uh, requirements, your expectation, um, you want to have as much as possible. And I've put it, uh, uh, do you have like uh, the model, the real time board, uh, Tom? Uh, no, sorry, I don't see it at the moment, but I will try to yeah. load it on my <laughs> you laptop. You should try that so you can get it to see a bit what we are talking about. Uh, just, just a minute. Yeah. And so in the meanwhile, so yeah, um, because I started myself with like just one card and I did not have a graphic chip, you know, integrated in the CPU or the motherboard. And I can tell you it was a horrible experience because if it's just your one card and there is no other way to display the screen, you can move, the, even moving the mouse is very laggy. So yeah. I will say my experience started to be better when I started to have two cards, uh, after three cards, four cards, and uh, 
I put it here on next to the next to the next to the cards the requirement in terms of uh, PSU the power supply and uh, it may be interested for you to to note it um, so basically you need like a 750 watt for uh, two cards uh, 1000 watt for three cards 1200 watt for four cards and above that it's really about doing animation you don't need much but uh, many illustrator just doing uh, illustration if you are a 3d artist i mean not a made painter or concept artist you may want to go up to three or four cards if you have the budget for it but i think it's always about um if you have more cards you're going to render faster if you render faster you're going to complete your jobs faster because you can directly see the mistakes you do in your artworks faster also and take better decisions uh, complete your work faster go to the next job and so it's maybe uh, more pricey at the beginning but in the end you're going to uh, you're going to make money come faster also so it's uh, you're going to refine the pricing more fast Tell me time when you you see the the real time board. Yeah, I I see the board already. Oh, okay, nice. Huh? Yeah, we see your mouse moving also. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the sun is a bit annoying from the side, but it's good. It's, you know. Yeah, no problem. Spring. Yeah. So yeah, about this um, number of GPU, I think it's pretty logical. You can see it this way. Uh, we can already. This video also is uh, the, 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 the purpose of this video is also to be able for people who ask uh, many questions. It's that we can make this video a reference. And so um, later on, they can actually access this video and uh, take all this information for them. So there is one thing that already come up very often is that people want to know if they have to use the SLI or not. And the answer is no because uh, the SLI is going to synchronize the, fra the, the frames between two cards. So they are going to calculate exactly the same thing. But Octane doesn't work like that. Octane, every card is calculating samples. Samples is uh, part of an image with, which contains a lot of uh, mistakes of, because of the, the rays. So this is why you see one, one sample has a lot of noise. And the more you calculate samples, they are going to be compiled together by the CPU and make a picture as clear as possible on the, depends the amount of uh, samples you do. So each graphic cards have actually a different task, even if they calculated the same picture. That's why we don't use SLI. Um, and so, yeah, the best way to calculate, to see actually which card you can buy is to use the Octane benchmark. And on this website, you can uh, see here um, like a sort of competition. <laughs> you get, hopefully, uh, the top is always taken by uh, Sebastian Michalski, <laughs> which, by the way, we salute. <laughs> and uh, he is always building like the top rigs, Tom also. And um, that's a way for you to, uh, to compare the cards and see which one you fits the best for your budget. Uh, this works like this for people who don't know. Um, you run a little uh, software which is going to calculate, uh, I think, uh, four or five scenes. And uh, on the different uh, render engines, it will be uh, direct lighting, PMC, or path tracing. And it makes an average of your score and it uploads it to the, to the website where you can compare your, the performance of your board with the others. So that's the best way to, for you to choose a graphic card is to actually go on this website and check the scores because it will be very accurate about what you will get in the future. And um, and yeah. yeah w w one quite important thing and useful actually, in the benchmark you will see a tick box, um, select or leave only single GPU and it will sort out um, the results based on single GPU performance and it will dismiss like any multi GPU systems. So in this case, if you're looking to buy one card or if you want to know the exact score of let's say GPU, uh, specific model of GPU, and you want to compare those cards with the prices let's say you have, you can tick that box and, uh, and get the average of that card. Because when you're building multi GPU systems, there are much more than raw performance. Uh, probably we are going to talk a bit later about things like heat, etc. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Um, 
Yeah, definitely. So for me, that's all on this topic about the Octane Bench. Um, don't hesitate if you have anything else to add. And on the topic of the the graphic cards, I think it's still important to talk about the Quadro and the Tesla because uh, you know many people wonder if they should have a GTX, which is supposed to be gaming card, or the Quadro or the Tesla. And the answer that comes all the time is that the Quadro and the Tesla is really not for us because the thing is that they may be very good on the moment. For example, recently there is this new Quadro. Uh, Tom, what is the name of this one? I think it's GV100. Yeah, and this it's is... It's Volta based, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. And with this NVLink, you can actually uh, have more VRAM because they are combined together, right? Yeah, if you're having a two cards and you connect them with NVLink, you combine the VRAM of both the GPUs. However, both of those GPUs, if you want to buy two of them, would cost you about $80,000. So there is a reason to buy Quadros or Teslas, but the reason is like uh, for Octane Render use it, it would be like you would actually need to have a, a project big enough to fill all that RAM because that comes at very steep price. So if, if you care about rendering speed and if you can optimize the scene, much better for you to choose GTX cars that are multiple times cheap and for the same amount of money you can have like I don't know, 10 times more performance. Yeah, because that's the thing. The a Quadro may be very good, but <clears throat> when it's priced 3000 4000 uh, the thing is that for the same price, you can get a lot of GTX. And when you start to combine the GTX, you will get even more performance than actually this new Quadro. So yeah. for the money, it's always better to get for a GTX. And the Quadro and Tesla have a different application. Usually you use it because you have a requirement for like double precision, which that every float point is calculated twice, I think, and then it's make an average of both. So this is like uh, more precise. And I guess it's uh, the reason why like you have Tesla cars into the Tesla cars and uh, it's used for science uh, things, you know, and uh, kind of mathematics that we don't need into our uh, thing, especially with Octane, because Octane does uh, calculate samples with mistakes. So it's really like, a pfft, shooting rays as much as as fast as possible to get like a, as fast as possible a sample and because we combine all of these samples together then it's it's uh, enough to have the gtx you don't need to have a super precise no. thing for this and uh, yeah, I, th I think hmm? sorry to hmm? to interrupt i think octane render uses double precision very little mm -hmm. but i might be mistaken maybe something is going to change in the future but for now single precision as you mentioned is the core thing and the new thing that is coming with uh, Octane 4 as they will be diving into AI features uh, you will probably find a usage of of those new tensor cores in the in the future but not for, for now at least and not not in version 3 mm -hmm. uh, but do you see the what I'm showing right now on the, the real time board? Yep. Yeah, okay. I see the board. I don't see exactly what you're doing there. <laughs> you don't see my mouse? You sure? No. Oh, shit. Okay. So, um, anyway, uh, about the kind of uh, the family of GTX, um, of course, as you have seen, uh, for people who don't know, uh, we are only talking about NVIDIA cards, okay? Because AMD cards don't have CUDA, which is a proprietary. Uh, uh, technology by uh, NVIDIA, and this is what Octane used to calculate uh, its honors. So that's why we don't even mention AMD here. Uh, it could be uh, interesting for other Honda engines, but not for Octane, and uh, for nothing that use CUDA, actually. So that's why we really only show GTX cars. But basically, every time uh, that NVIDIA release some cars, they are going to release like a low tier, you know, like it will be 1050, 1060. Actually, it was 1060, I think, when it started, and they released 1050 later. Um, and then you've got a middle card, which was the 1070. And then there is a high card, uh, which is 1080. And these three cards that are released uh, at the beginning and Later on, it will be the te uh, the 100, the 1170, you know, so it, it's, it will always be the same uh, pattern that you were going to see. So what we say now is working for this generation of card, but will probably work also for the next and the next and the next. 
And uh, what happened all the time is that when they release these three cards, after that they release the Titan, and the Titan is what they are able to do best on the moment for the you know white public. And uh, <clears throat> this Titan, all, all the time there is people who wonder, should I get a Titan, should I get not a Titan? And my personal advice actually is to wait, because after the Titan, they release the version TI. And the TI has almost the same performance as the Titan. It's about 5% uh, more or less the same performance in terms of speed. The only difference is that you have less VRAM. Uh, simply, many people don't actually need the VRAM of a Titan because um, what you get on the TI is always like uh, enough if you optimize a bit your scenes, if you don't throw uh, like billions of geometry for nothing. Um, usually the TI is the best card per generation. What do you think about that, Tom? Yeah, it's in general, it's, it's more or less true. Uh, NVIDIA, if, if we look back like few generations, few architectures back, they always change the plan quite a bit. But in general, yes, if, if you're looking for a value, if you're looking for, let's say, speed per dollar, uh, looking at GTX equivalent that is going to be cropped in some functionality, but have uh, all the power that we as Octane Render users need, uh, is actually given the best value because it is much more uh, targeted to the end user gamers who who is going to be much more cautious about how how he or she is spending the budget. But actually, if you want to be first and if you want to get the the card as as soon as possible, getting into Titan line uh, has one advantage. Uh, like you can get that card uh, sooner and. The upgrade cycle for Titans is not so frequent compared to GTX cards. So when you hold the Titan, you can hold it for a bit longer time and it will still be somewhat a bit faster than GTX line cards. One thing to add also about the, in favor of the Titan is that it exists special drivers for the Titan that um, because uh, for those who don't know, um, when you install NVIDIA drivers on Windows 10, especially Windows 10, but Windows take an amount of VRAM, like it's about 15%, I think. And so if you have like 10, uh, like 11 uh, gigabytes uh, of VRAM, you can only use actually 850 or something like that. And even when you have four cards, you, you may expect that uh, Windows is going to res reserve, you know, like uh, take this amount of VRAM on the first card, but no, it does it on the four cards. And this is totally useless, and so you get less VRAM than what you're going to use. And for Titan, it exists some drivers that don't do this. So you get 100% of your VRAM just for uh, the Titan, but it's only compatible with Titan cards and Quadro and Tesla. So that's Yeah, I actually. Of haven't checked this feature myself because I'm still using Windows 7 and in Windows 7 you do not have this problem so if if you let's say buy the card that has less of VRAM for instance you maybe save some money and buy a 6 gigabyte card it is actually worth to uh, think about getting Windows 7 instead of Windows 10 because it will not cut that RAM for Windows and for the applications it will be you will see more or less all the VRAM that your card has. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So um, that's all for this uh, little uh, talk about this. Basically, yeah, if you don't have a lot of budget, the 1070 Ti, uh, the, the 1070, sorry, is uh, still a good card to go. We don't say it's uh, it's bad, but simply, if you're looking for the best performance, don't expect it to be like uh, so crazy because uh, what you will get if you see, because what also matters is like the space in your computer hey guys i i just have a question uh sorry uh but related to the to the live mm -hmm. uh smisha uh i guess sebastian mm -hmm. is al asking uh, are you saying that all titans have no vram issues on windows 10 me, I said that there is a, a driver that uh, allows the Titan, because you know there is this uh, double HQL, I think so. It's this uh, kind of drivers that everybody downloads, but it exists special drivers for the Titan 
that makes it possible to not have this issue about the reserved VRAM. Okay, I, I will try to not interrupt you that much, but as it was uh, really on the topic. Yeah, don't uh -huh. hesitate, don't hesitate, especially if it's related, so no yeah. problem. Um, okay, so just wanted to also say something about the VRAM, because it's a little example I use often. Uh, it's not by my best artwork, but it's still uh, just a, an example to say that I did that on a laptop, okay? The laptop have a, has a Quadro 1000M, which uh, score 28 <laughs> on the benchmark. <laughs> just to give you an example, 28 is nothing at all. And you also have that on the, my girlfriend as a Wacom Mobile Studio Pro. And on this uh, Wacom, there is, uh, like my laptop, there is an integrated graphic chip on the CPU and you've got the Quadro. The Quadro so is dedicated to the task, but it scored 28. 28 is really nothing. <laughs> see? It makes you laugh. <laughs> and, uh, and still, I was able to make a, a medium uh, kind of scene um, with uh, hundreds or thousands of instances and uh, everything was made in 3D. Uh, it's just uh, to explain that the VRAM a month <clears throat> is uh, is still important, but you don't need to have 12,000, uh, 12 uh, gigabytes, you know, just for uh, for having 12 gigabytes. You can actually do uh, a lot even with a small amount. Just then you need to also to understand what is uh, optimization in 3D and use it the best. You don't want to use like 8K maps if your objects are far from the camera. You need to remember and to get uh, to know what is Texel pixel in video game is the density of pixels on the screen. So basically when you uh, have a rock that uh, is in front of the camera, this rock may use like 2K texture, but if you see a tree or you see the same rock but far, this will use like 256 pixels or 50, uh, 500 uh, pixels. So the pixel is the, the density of pixels on the screen. Okay, and this is, makes the lot the difference because many people just throw 8K textures, 4K textures, and they don't care about that. And they have like uh, dozens or hundreds of materials and then all combine it together. Of course, you need like then to have a lot of VRAM or you need to use out of core. But uh, if you are a bit smart about this uh, idea of level of detail, same that you do usually with the geometry, but you do that also on the materials, you're able to fit actually a lot in your scene. So, yeah, that's just an example to, to relativize a bit. Hey, this, uh, Ivan, yeah. uh, Joel asked if you could turn up a bit your uh, microphone as you're a bit quieter than... Uh, the oh, rest. okay. I will try to speak into it. Uh, Ivan, uh, not Tom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, I don't know if I can uh, make it uh, more than that. We, we are lo loud enough. <laughs> uh, let me see if I can add a filter. Game. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I can game. Ah, yeah. Maybe. I uh, tell me. I hope by one decibel. I don't know if this would be better. Yeah, uh, one, one or two, and I, I think it's going to be okay. Yeah. Okay. Maybe I do two. Oh, no, not twenty. Okay, should be better. I hope so. Okay, so that's about it for uh, this first part okay so basically the number of cards you've got uh, you start with one graphic chip plus one one graphic cards okay avoid if you don't have a graphic chip integrated in the cpu or the board whatever you don't want to have only one gpu okay you can you you can work with one gpu only if you already have also a graphic chip to support the display because the card is going to be used a lot by the render engine so yeah. yeah may i interrupt a bit Dude. there is a cool feature uh, if you're working with octane and it takes like all resources to render and your mouse starts lagging on the screen there is like priority button um i don't know exactly uh, where this is located on plugins but in octane render standalone it's below render window you will see priority level and you can adjust it basically it tells whether you would like to give all uh, GPU resources for render task or you, you would like reserve 20 or 40 percent for let's say operating and operating system and other 
tasks yeah. that your computer do. So this actually stops the lag, but at the same time, it it actually longers your render time because now your GPU is not working at 100%. Okay, so this is where you can find this in the uh, Octane settings. You go into uh, settings and then you find it there. Basically, you need to activate use priority. Yeah. And then it will uh, follow the preference you have there. So you set priority low. <laughs> Sorry. So you set priority low and you check use this priority. You don't check it under other cards. You just check it on this one. But uh, it's also to relativize because uh, on big scenes, this doesn't matter so much. It will still lag a lot. And uh, yeah. you want to have a good experience. Personally, when I render, I want to watch a movie at the same time because I have m multiple screens. <laughs> so this is all the, these things that you want to continue doing something, you know, when you are rendering. If you're rendering a big scene for final render, or you want to do in the live viewer, you always want to be multitasking. So this is what, you know, you're very blocked with this, uh, with the thing when you just have one card. I, I have tried that in the past, and honestly, you just your head explodes. You know, you you're really uh, not happy with this setup. It's a bit. Uh, you see, I don't want just to to tell to people like, yeah, go in Octane with one card, you will be happy. No, it's, you will not be happy. You will become crazy pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah, well, well, one thing that actually, like, if you have one card and you're driving screen and operating system from it, it will reserve some VRAM for these tasks. So if your card is like three gigabytes, you will reserve some for, for operating system. Maybe you're running Photoshop in the background or something, and it will use some memory as well. And you end up with just half the card left for, for rendering tasks. So it's not optimal, but you can do it if, if you really need, but it's not optimal at all. <laughs> Yeah. All right. So, so let's dig a bit into the type of cards. Okay. So sure. basically, um, the what I know is that when Nvidia creates new cards, they basically create this uh, reference card, also called Founder Edition. And what they do is that they are a bit the architects. So they create the plans like an architect but they will not produce it in mass. They will send this plan to the uh, manufacturers, uh, I don't know if we say this, uh, like in, uh, like Evga, MSI, Gigabyte, and all these brands. They And the first thing they do, because they want to sell the card as fast as possible on the market, they are going to not change anything. And they are going to, to call it Founder Edition. And that's why you can see on the market so many Founder Editions. They are basically all the same. Uh, and they are from different brands, but they are the same because they do no modification at all. They just want to throw it on the market as fast as possible. And the benefit of these cards actually are that the hair is going directly here at the back of the card, which is uh, out of the um, out of the uh, case. So the hair is not going to be sent on top of each other. There, it's not going to stay in the case or like little bit and most of the, the hot air is going out of the case. So that's the cards that interest us actually when you do multi-GPU, because the custom cards are the second generation, I would say, of these cards, because then the manufacturers, uh, MSI, etc., they are going to customize this card. They are going to try to make it better. They overclock it by default from the factory, and they're going to change the cooling system, so they add more uh, fans, they can do actually pretty a lot of stuff and um, they make the card better okay simply the problem is that because the, the now the hair is going to be extracted by these fans if you stack multiple cards on top of each other all the air is going to be on the next card and so if you have a sandwich it's a very bad setup to have this so it's okay when you have one card it's okay when you have two cards especially if you can have a little bit of space, like one centimeter of space. But when you start to have three cards or four cards, it's a very bad idea to actually use these uh, custom cards. And we saw many people actually uh, complaining like, oh yeah, I bought four of these cards and uh, I don't understand my temperature are going crazy, my computer crash. Guess why? <laughs> That's the reason. And um, the reference card by default have uh, less interesting cooling they have actually the worst cooling. Uh, this is why you need to actually uh, make the fan curves correct. And we will talk about that later. Um, 
so that uh, the temperatures are still under control. And uh, two other kind of cars that you may find are these hybrids. So the hybrids are actually very, very good cars because they come up with a closed uh, water cooling uh, loop. So you don't have to do it yourself. You don't have to spend the money for this. Um, the downside is that you need to actually fit them all into your uh, computer. It's not easy. It's not, uh, I would say it's not the easiest because you have all these fans, all these radiators. And if you, I have a setup with four of them and uh, yeah, it looks a bit crazy with all these cables. Uh, but still, the, these cards are are really the best in terms of cooling your uh, your um, graphic card. They, for comparison, uh, I would say that a custom card run between 60 and 70, about this, 70, 70 or 70 degree, I'm talking about degree. The reference card is more about 70 to 80, and the hybrid is between 40 and 50. So it's really crazy. You can put your computer under full load, a big scenes for 24 hours uh, straight, and you're still at 40 degree of 50 degree big maximum. And 40 degrees if you overclock. <laughs> so that's pretty that's pretty good, really. You can overclock them without problems. The only thing that is not so good about the hybrid is the price. If you can find them for $100 more than what you will actually pay for a Funder edition, that's a good price. Okay, because the price that you will actually spend into uh, a custom loop usually it's about well, also 100 or 150 per card, right? It's uh, because it, the water it's block, for water block alone. Yeah, yeah. Just the water block is 100. Uh, so if you find this what this uh, hybrid for like 800 dollar, 900 dollar, you're still into a good range. But if you go above that, you overpay it because it's still a good card, but it does not worth the price you're paying for. Like 1000 for hybrid is crazy. And, uh, and then finally, you've got the custom loop and uh, we've got a master here with us. Uh, actually, Tom can say a lot about this topic. Uh, I tried to do it myself. He tried to uh, tell me which component to buy, but actually I abandoned this completely <laughs> because for him, it was OK. He was like, yeah, yeah you can buy the component uh, twice or, th uh, or th three uh, exemplary of it. And if it's, it's not working, then you can take the other one. And, and um, but you need to be really into this uh, this mindset. It's um, it's not an easy choice. So it's not the easiest thing, but it's definitely the the, the more cool, you know, in actually liter literally and uh, yeah, it's really the best setup. You can really go uh, above uh, every, every expectation because basically with the hybrid, what you tend to do is that you have four cards into your setup. With the custom loop, you can have as much as uh, the motherboard allow you because you can then, uh, by default, they they have like a, they, they are taking two slots, and with the custom loop, you're actually removing the cooling and you make it actually one slot. So if your motherboard have eight, eight slots, you can go with eight cards just in one, in one uh, setup. So we will, but we will talk a bit more uh, about this uh, water thing. But uh, yeah, it's about that. So you have the air with the custom, the reference, the water with the hybrid and the custom loop. And uh, if you want to go with uh, three cards, you should focus on the reference if you go on air. If you have a good budget, you can go on hybrid. If you have a very good budget and very good knowledge, you can go with custom loop. And uh, custom cards, it's only okay for one or two cards. Do you have something to, to add on that, uh, Tom? Uh, I can mention one thing that uh, it's kind of in between uh, reference cards and custom cards. Uh, first batch of custom cards uh, go with like reference PCB and they only add on top a uh, cooler, different cooler, like each brand has their own sort of like dual or triple fan coolers that they add on the reference cards. And then there is like a different type of reference card, not reference card, but different type of custom card that actually has not only custom cooler, but custom PCB. And in a lot of cases, uh, these PCBs are actually quite big. And if, if you compare cards, side by side, you might see a difference like of five centimeters or something. So in some cases, you when you're buying a custom card, make sure that it fits your case because 
it might be a situation where you put the card inside and you cannot close the case because wires coming from the side are blocking a possibility to close the door of the case, for instance. So you you need to look into these things as well as, as you're planning your GPU build because some cards sometimes have not only dual slots, but, uh, let's say, thickness, but they are 2.5 or even 3 slots. So in a lot of cases, uh, when you're getting like non-reference uh, GPU, take a look if it has like reference PCB or if it's completely, completely new type of GPU and it's really, really big because you might not be able to fit into into your not only your motherboard but actually your case because there some cases are also standard standardized and bigger GPUs just doesn't physically fit in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did uh, myself a mistake like that in my first uh, PC. I had like um, the case at the power supply at the bottom. And uh, when I wanted to fit my last card, I actually did not have the place for, put, for putting it like that, you know. So, yeah, yeah you have to take in consideration uh, the motherboard, the number of PCI, but we will talk about that a little later. Yeah, um, yeah all right. And if you, uh, as a reminder, if you have questions, just uh, drop them in the live chat. Max is uh, taking care of that and he will ask it in the second part. Or if it's on the topic, you can remember you can interrupt us anytime. So um, that's uh, <laughs> the amount of uh, PC setups that uh, I took in consideration for that. Maybe it exists, uh, and uh, yeah, it exists some other things like people put even like PC under an aquarium, you know. <laughs> like uh, so, there is different uh, kind of setups, but this is, I would say, the main one that interests us. So um, I will start by these this, uh, things, which are the ones that we talked about just before. So when you do a setup uh, with Air, you can fit three or four cards. And it depends on your generation, actually, because on the 980 Ti, for example, they were running pretty hot. But the 1080 Ti run more cool by default, you know, doing nothing. So Air became something that you can consider when you do four cards, because it depends on the generation you choose. Some are like way too hot, some have, are cool enough, you know. And so right now I have like one of my, my machine, it's uh, 4 uh, 1080 Ti on hair, and I really have zero problem of temperature. And uh, so it's possible, no problem. Um, the thing is that the air, this kind of cooling uh, makes some noise and they run more hot than hybrids or custom loot, okay? Um, but if you can live with that, that's fine. Personally, I don't care. I put headphones, I put music, I hear nothing. And temperatures, uh, actually, it makes a good heater for the winter. <laughs> so, <laughs> and uh, actually, I was doing mining, you know, and uh, people don't understand is that Octane is actually a, a, a sort of, um, I don't want to, how I can say that? Octane is really soft for your graphic cards. When you start doing mining, you understand what is a stress test for the cards, you know? Because mining use really your GPU to 100%. It's, it's simple. With this kind of setup, I had to down clock my cards. And with uh, Octane, you can actually even overclock them, even on hair, you know? Okay, not crazy, but you can still do, you have some margin, you know? And, um, yeah, so Octane is still pretty okay for the cars. It's not like the craziest you can imagine. But uh, anyway, so the best, the, the, the good point about all these uh, setups, Air, Hybrid, Custom Loop, is that all your cars are directly on the motherboard. And that's the best you can do for reactivity because they are directly plugged on the PCI Express. And uh, you may want to have a lot, but still for the reactivity, when I what I mean reactivity is like, you have opened the live viewer and now you rotate around your objects and this needs to refresh every time. This, all these three setups are the best for the reactivity. All the others that we are going to talk about later uh, have a little downside, downside about the reactivity because it needs to go, for example, the network rendering needs to go through the network uh, and uh, other ones may have like risers or splitters or like a PL, a chip PLX. And this is all things that uh, 
can be a little bottleneck, you know. So if you can fit all your cars into the same machine, it's the best you can do for reactivity purpose. And um, yeah, so basically you have the hair. This is actually screenshots of uh, my machine. And you've got hybrids um, and custom loop. So the custom loop, um, I think this is pictures I took from you or from uh, Sebastian. <laughs> yeah, it's Sebastian's builder. Yeah. Yeah, this, this guy is making like really good uh, machines. And actually right now he's building a monster. You don't want uh, me to say uh, too much about this, but uh, he's doing a big uh, monster. He's uh, ac actually watching the live. <laughs> yeah, he's building something. But I can say that because he said it himself like on the on Facebook, but like he built something with 100 cards. <laughs> so <laughs> he's on another level, you know, he's in the sky. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, one thing I could say about this um, water cooling thing is that when I talk to you, uh, Tom, about, uh, because I want my, my previous machine, I wanted to do a water cooling like this. And then, then I realized that it costs me 1,500 if I have like- At least. Yeah, at least, because uh, it's $100 per uh, water block that you put on each card, plus the huge, um, I don't remember the name of this. Um, a radiator pump. Yeah, radiator pump. You need you need uh, the tubes. You need all these little connectors. You know that you that you plug. I don't know the name of all yeah. of them. But basically, you come up with a situation where you have to spend actually more than one thousand, one thousand five, just so you are. I mean, all this price is not for the cards. It's not for the motherboard. It's not for the case. It's just for the water cooling stuff. Yeah. And that is something to consider because 1,005 equal two graphic cards. <laughs> so depends how you want to spend the money, but it still make it possible to have a crazy monster machine in the minimum amount of space. So yeah. if you have the budget, it's definitely something crazy. And then you need to contact uh, Sebastian or Tom. They're going to advise you or make, uh, make it for you. I think you're doing this, right, Tom? Uh it's not my, let's say, business. I just help some friends and so on. But yeah, it's 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 a simple thing that actually fascinates me: how to put as much power in as little uh, room, as little space as possible. This is somehow really interesting for me. It's it's I don't know computer fetish for us to say. Yeah, uh, j just a question actually that I have myself and that uh, some yeah. people may ask. Uh, I, I know that when you plug a card, so not only you need the 250 watts to uh, power it by the PSU, yeah. but also I heard that the motherboard itself is providing uh, power to the card. And I think it's about 75 watts. So uh, how yeah. do you do this when you have all these cards into one motherboard? Um. Actually, GPU draw power, as you mentioned, uh, through P PCIe cables that come and plug directly into the card, but then it draws some power through the motherboard. And when you have more than two or three GPUs, you will notice on your motherboard uh, manual that it is recommended to plug uh, additional additional power plug into motherboard, so it will it would be able to provide all that power. It's by PCIe standards, I think it's 70 watts maximum per P PCI slot. But in some cases, especially with AMD cards, if, if, if you're into mining and such, some of cards might actually draw even more. And there's a lot of horror stories where, where people put like three or, or five or seven cards into motherboard and they fry motherboard, fry connectors for power supplies, etc. So you need to be careful with that. Just because you have a connector, or connector on your motherboard, it doesn't mean that the board is, is able actually to, um, uh, to power your GPU because some of those motherboards, they were never created to run like seven GPUs. They were created to run seven PCIe devices, not seven GPUs. And actually, some companies like Asus, they never tried this before releasing this these motherboards to, to the market. Yeah. There's a, a little question from Sebastian. He, he asked uh, Ivan, how many extra fans do you have in your quad hybrid setup? 
uh, I've got one fan for each uh, hybrid uh, little cooler. But basically, it's there. You can see it here. That's uh, for the hybrid. That's the configuration. And here, I've got the radiator, and just behind, I've got a fan plus one fan here plus one fan there. Here, it's the fan also connected to the radiator, and here on the top, it's the water cooling of the CPU. So basically, the all the fans I have, they are connected to the radiators of the cooling of the CPU or the GPU. That's all I have. And uh, it works fine. Just a yeah. quick question. Do you close the door of that machine? Yeah. Yeah, the door is closed. But, 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 but if I am doing like, if I know basically that I am doing a lot of rounders, oh, and yeah. basically I have a window here. So it has no uh, additional fan on the side. Okay. So I'm not, uh, it's really just a window. But really, when I am doing like, uh, now I don't do mining anymore. But when I was doing mining, uh, it was like so crazy. Uh, <laughs> that uh, yeah, I, I have like a water watt meter on the wall, so I can see how much watt <laughs> I draw, and uh, which calculates uh, how much I pay, you know. But hopefully, I was in Airbnb, <laughs> so <laughs> I don't pay electricity. And uh, the thing is that um, in this case, I open all the cases. I open them all because uh, I, I, if there is a fan on the on the window on the side of the case i leave it close enough you know like uh, 10 centimeters so it can still cool a little bit but i leave it open if i do a lot of rounders because it costs nothing to open the door and it's it, it's um, sometimes you you win like three or five degrees just by opening the case yeah. so if you plan to do like crazy amount of rounder or mining or whatever it is Opening the door is still a good option. Yeah, so you asked, so the top fans are intake for air? Uh, let me think. No, this one actually goes up. This one goes up. This one goes there. Yeah, so it's, this one goes out. This one goes out. And this uh, three on the front goes inside. So the air yeah. basically comes only from front. Yeah, he said that, that it's impressive because you have like uh, 30 fans for 11 GPUs. Yeah, I saw one of his machine actually. It's so insane what uh, he's doing. And uh, it's very, very huge, but it's, uh, it's a different setup. This one is with hybrid. The one he did is with a custom loop and uh, he yeah. also has more cards. I think it's actually this this one, the, the machine. Ma ma maybe we, we have more noise because uh, we, we both have four GPUs and running the fan really loud when uh, yeah, but we this is also, you know it's the thing I, at the beginning when i wanted to build a machine like that on the right i i thought okay look this thing must be the best and it is the best okay but i thought mm, maybe it will do less noise water cooling i i was imagining water cooling there is water i was imagining there is drop of water you know and this is <laughs> this is the sound <laughs> that you may heard you know just like some water in the tubes but no because you have like all these fans next to the radiators you actually make the same amount of noise than on hair if not okay. more actually uh, one note regarding to to noise um, if you have let's say one fan um, one uh, piece of radiator with one fan um, you need to spin this these fans quite quite fast in order to move uh, enough air to keep GPU cool. But if, for instance, you have like two fans per GPU, you have like bigger radiator. You can spin those fans much much slower, which actually leads to less noise. But for for that, uh, let's say, for that effect to have like silence. When you building your computer, it becomes bigger and bigger, and you pay more and more to have this, let's say, improved acoustic uh, acoustic signature. Meaning you have like less noise from your computer, but this comes at price, and this comes at the price of of size of your machine. So it depends where is your preference as a user, whether you care about noise or whether you don't care. For instance, if you're just working and you have a headphone, that's no problem. But if you're having, for instance, open plan studio and maybe 20 more people sitting in that studio and you have really noisy machine, you might have no problems, but others might be not very happy for you to render like 24 seven. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, actually, uh, Max, can you ask uh, Sebastian if he wants to share the pictures of his rig? I'm pleased to, to show it to everyone because he makes some crazy uh, machines. Yeah, actually. I think he will. Uh, how are you? So, Sebastian, if you want to send us some uh, yeah, I think he just pages. he can't send links on the live chat, by the way. So maybe he yeah, may maybe he can Facebook. on Facebook or something. And uh, another question um, about the, the summer. Uh, Fabien asked for the heat wave. What do you do? Uh, I answered him, but we are in France and Carda are not too hot in uh, in summer. But do you have uh, tips for rendering uh, with? Uh... So two things. First is to open the case. It will uh, save five degrees at least. Second thing, if you really want, you can put a, a physical fan, a big one. <laughs> not directly on the on the board, you know, not directly on, the, but like in a way that it propagates a bit the heat. Because what the thi the thing is that your heat is not disappearing in the air. The heat needs to go somewhere, and so you can do it with two methods. You could actually, you know, the, like make a tube that goes from the back of your <laughs> of your uh, of your um, PC directly to the window, for example, and then <laughs> it extracts the hot air. The good, the, the thing also is not to put the, the PC next to a wall, next to a table. If like the fans are like, you put it below the table and the fans are putting the hot air on the table, that's a very bad idea. You need to have the computer in a way that the hot air can make a long path. You know, if it has a wall 20, 20 centimeters next to it, it's also going to uh, keep all the hot air in one part of the room. So you, what you want is that all this hot air goes somewhere far. And uh, so what I do is I open windows and I try to have the computers that are turned in a way that the hot air goes <laughs> to the window. And, um, and the, I never actually did with a big fan, but uh, you could do that, do that. Just I tell you, don't turn it exactly on the, on the because you can make damage, you know, because uh, if, if it's too, f too, too strong, the air and then the, there is other fans, it's going to use them faster. But if you turn them in a way that it just put the hot air far in the room, that's better. So that's the two things I do. I'd never try to put ice on it, actually. <laughs> and you actually, it's the first year that I'm considering to get like a portable air conditioner in my room because last year I had like few GPUs in the room and then I built some computers with like seven and eight GPUs. And when you start testing, when you start rolling the scenes and you have 30 degrees, more or less 30 degrees outside, it gets very hot in, in your room in a matter of minutes. Mm -hmm. So if you're really looking to render like 24-7 inside your room, uh, one thing would be just, as you mentioned, open your windows and let the heat out. Another, just use some, some type of air conditioner and try to to cool the ambient temperatures as much as you can because one thing with temperatures that we will probably discuss a bit later once once your temperature inside the room rises to let's say 20 degrees more uh, your GPU temperature is going to rise as well and then you are going to start losing performance so all the crashing of computer and all the slowdown is caused by heat mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, on this part, don't hesitate to extend on the temperatures. I don't think I have like a... Ah, yeah, we will... No, sorry, we'll talk about the fan curves. But uh, if you have things to say, don't hesitate. Don't leave it for later. It's fine. So, um, all right, for this... Uh, yeah, so, yeah. Seb Sebastian just sent you two shots with the... Oh, yeah, where did you see 11 it? GPU oh, ma machines on, on, on Messenger, yeah. Yeah, okay, let's see. Yeah, I want to show that to people because he makes really insane uh, things. Yeah, he sends some pictures. Send me more, mate. Send me more. Yeah, so that's the back of his computer. Or maybe I can show that bigger. Oh, no, I can't. Yeah. yeah, that's the size of his machine. So the, the good thing he did is that he really was able to to fit all of this power. So now I think we are talking about 11 GPU, if I'm not wrong, how much it was, eight GPUs? Yeah, it was 11, 11, 11 GPUs. 11. Yeah, 11, so that's really crazy. 11 GPU in one machine. 
and you have to consider that 11 cards usually you will need three computers to fit them all because you could fit four cards per machine plus three <laughs> so that's like three computers into one and uh, that's an amazing uh, thing he did because uh, that's really the best you can do for the space and um, the way I saw this actually I don't know if I can see it yeah basically myself uh, yeah but we can talk about that later on the on the rig not easy to send more okay and uh, we're going to continue so okay so we've, we visited a bit the hair okay so if you if you have a good fan curves you can make four cars in it the hybrid you can also have four cars in it and the custom loop you can go below that limit because you're going to change instead of having these big cars you're going to make them their profile uh, less huge you know, slimmer to be, yeah slimmer thank you and so you can actually fit more as much as you have the pci express ports basically and on the on the big motherboard you have a, a lot of the time you have like eight uh, eight pci exp uh, express so you can go with eight pretty easy and you can go like uh, Sebastian Misha with up to 8, uh, no, 11. And uh, for that, I don't remember which uh, motherboard he had. Um, but this is like pretty crazy. It stuff. was one of a uh, super micro motherboard, server motherboard with dual CPUs. Yeah, like for the Big Xeon. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually one of the reasons why he, he used dual Xeon motherboards is because, well, you have much more lanes to connect GPUs and in a way you have a bit more stability because once you scale cards past let's say past four past past seven cards you get into some roadblocks on certain motherboards because some motherboards do not want to boot and in order for him to make more than seven cards he used dual Xeon systems and server motherboards yeah it's pretty insane Congrats again on this achievement. <laughs> and so, okay, so basically, as we said, the best thing is that you can go, it's compact. There is still the best advantage of the reactivity because everything is still on the PCI. It doesn't match much, it does, doesn't do a lot of noise, but still it's pretty noisy, I think, because of all the fans he has to, to do for cooling his radiators. And it's particularly expensive because you're going to spend this extra money on uh, all the stuff you need, radiators, uh, tubes. Yeah, just just one note regarding to custom cooling. Uh, we tried to do some calculations regarding on when you actually see a benefit of going custom cooling because it's, as you mentioned, it's expensive. And in terms of, let's say, cooling seven GPU machine, you are spending two, th 3,000 sometimes on, on cooling parts if you need to keep it cool and you need to keep it quiet and you need to have a redundancy, for instance, multiple pumps in order one of them would fail. But if you have just two or three cards, to pay for cooling is actually not worth because you're spending more than you can benefit out of it because you're not getting too much of performance out of it. However, with seven GPU computers, it starts, it's kind of a tipping point because with seven GPU machine that is properly cooled, you can outperform the eight or nine GPU machine that is only on air. And that actually you spend money for cooling, but you need less cards to reach the same level of performance, which actually pays for itself. And you have, and you still have like smaller, cooler, and in a way much more stable machine because you have like less complexity in it. Also, one thing to add uh, is that um, in my case, uh, I am traveling a lot. Okay, last year yeah. I was in Berlin and I changed eight times the flats. Okay, uh, yeah. it's eight times in a year. So you have to imagine it's eight times, and they had no escalator. Okay. No escalator. They don't have an escalator into uh, or elevator. Sorry, elevator into Berlin. It's inc incredible. So I was always like taking all the the computers. I have three, and I was like walking four stairs, putting all of them for one or two months, and then I had to take them again to go in the car, put them back. 
go somewhere else, going up. And this is, uh, is, uh, is crazy because I had to carry them with me. So for me, the space and uh, fragility of the setup is also yeah. very, is an important factor for me. If you know that you don't travel with your computers, you just make a computer and leave it like that in your room, in your living room for a while. Uh, you maybe don't think about that, but if you are traveling like me, it, it becomes a factor that is important. And one thing to remember is that all these cars you put next to each other put some weight on the PCI Express. And so if you travel with them, you should, uh, and I think you should uh, remove the water in some case in the custom loop. I think you need to remove the water or you have some pumps yeah, that you can destage and they, they don't uh, drop the water. Some yeah. special it's, a, it's actually advisable to, to get rid of water when you're shipping. Plus, you need to reinforce the cards so they, from vibration, they wouldn't knock out and wouldn't break something. And also, Another to, thing. to put it like that, uh, like on the yeah. uh, on the back, so the cars are like fitting vertical. Yeah. Another thing on on the same on the same uh, on the same topic. Actually, one of the machines that I built. I really liked it and I really wanted to build something for myself but because I I would have to move it somewhere and it weights like 80 kilos I was like okay this is no go for me because if you have to move a computer that is worth like fifty thousand dollars and it weights like 80 kilos and you need to take it from fourth floor it's it's not a joke at all yeah so it was just an addition to think about if you travel and stuff, these kind of things make it more fragile actually than making them yeah. more solid. And so it's great if you don't move with them too much, but, uh, and, and I know, you know, some people can say, yeah, you have some case for the, some special case and stuff, but it's not, if people uh, follow me a bit, they can see like I put my three computers in the car. I play Tetris, you know, in the car, <laughs> the monitors, the computer, the baggage and stuff. And so uh, it's an important thing to remember. And uh, yeah. all right. There is one solution for, for those big machines, actually, that I lately tried to build one myself on this recipe is basically you have a small computer with four or seven GPUs. And then you have external radiator that it's not in any way connected to your computer. In this case, you basically split cooling components and split your main machine. And then you have detachable uh, tubes uh, with quick disconnects. And in this way, you can have like machine from two parts and easily move it around. But again, it's like additional box to your computer. Yeah, I'm looking for uh, some screenshots. I don't remember the brand. Uh, it is, uh, if you're looking to that radiator, it's called Mora. Uh, M-O-R-A. Yeah. M -O -R -A. yeah, I remember. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is the one that you advised me once. Okay. Yeah, so. it's, it's a big radiator. And, I, I, and I, it's actually pretty compact for what it does. But on the other side, as mentioned, you have a computer and you have a big radiator and the size of computer that just for cooling. Yeah, it can be attached or detached from the case. Yeah, you uh, basically yeah, yeah. can have quick disconnects so you can detach from your loop and that's it. It's one of the solutions to have like not so heavy computer if, if you wish. Yeah, basically for people who don't understand what we mentioned is these radiators that usually in the hybrid we have one here, one there, one there, one there, plus here we have two. Uh, all of that is basically outside your computer. So all yeah. the heat goes outside and the, the, the radiator is going to be hot. So you need the fans to uh, push the, hair, the hot air somewhere else. And that's what we just shown. Yeah. Okay, so uh, yeah, don't hesitate if you have things to say about the custom loop because I think you're pretty much a, a master on that also. So that's great to hear you about these topics. I'm sure At least I can try to answer. <laughs> And um, yeah, okay, so I think we are good on air hybrid custom loop. We can go uh, a bit uh, on the other topics. And if people have questions, don't, have it, don't hesitate to reach Max. And so, okay, so the four other type of config you may want to build is first the eGPU. So what is a eGPU? A eGPU is a graphic card that you can uh, connect to, uh, to like a power supply. And then you can connect this eGPU with Thunderbolt or even USB 
but USB is not advised because you will have a small bandwidth. But like with things like Thunderbolt, actually it goes pretty pretty fast, so you can consider that. that. And it can be a good option for some people to extend the power of an already existing computer for GPU rendering. And the case where it will become uh, viable and interesting is when you travel with a laptop. So you have your laptop, which has a limited amount of space inside. You cannot plug a graphic card, obviously. So you can travel with this little box with an additional uh, card, which will be like a 1080 Ti. And you will get uh, a lot more powerful uh, setup. You st obviously, it's not going to be uh, slim. It's not going to be uh, very easy. But you put that in a bag with your laptop, and you're good to go and good to render uh, pretty heavy scenes with that. So I think it's yeah, nice. An another you. usage. Sorry. Another usage it might be if you have an uh, what's known as a trash bin Mac, that black piece with no expansion slots. Mm -hmm. So some guys use these eGPUs in order to expand and connect NVIDIA GPUs to, to their Macs. Yeah, yeah. Sorry so, to interrupt. No, just no, no, but that's a very good addition for sure. I forgot yeah. about the Mac because I, I didn't touch that for years, but that's true. Uh, yeah. Actually, um, it's great to extend the power of a Mac because you cannot uh, put it inside. It could work on an iMac. And they all have actually the the Thunderbolt by default, so it's pretty easy yeah. to set up something like that. But remember, just to mention, yes, yeah. yeah, sorry, just to mention, so we wouldn't share false information. It's actually not so easy. Apple made this a bit more easier than it was before, especially for AMD cards, which should be which should be possible to connect them more or less out of the box. You get like eGPU, update your operating system, update drivers, and it works. But for NVIDIA GPUs, it's still a headache. And if you want to use eGPU, it's probably better to have um, some alternative solution uh, with some script that guys wrote in order to allow this to be made because Apple officially doesn't support that for NVIDIA GPUs. You can use eGPU only with AMD cards, officially, but unofficially there are, I think for three or four years, there is a solution. There is some code shared on the web and you can use this if you want. It's not the most stable solution. It will, it will crash from time to time, but if you are like hardcore Mac user and you do not want to change the system, it is a possibility. Yeah, but if you get also serious about GPU rendering, you should also leave Mac because the way... <laughs> they... No, seriously, they are so stupid. They deliver you like this big Mac Pro and I was I was eight years on Mac, okay? Uh, yeah. and, and so, so I know that I wanted to stay on Mac, but they are so stupid. They don't put Nvidia cards on their towers, their Mac Pro. They only do AMD cards. And I think it was because they had a partnership, you know, and... Uh, and that's stupid because the end user, which is a professional, he wants to use CUDA and he cannot use CUDA because he is forced with AMD. And then he must come up with solutions like that to put a graphic card. No, this is like insane. I understand if it is for a laptop, but if it is for a Mac Pro, you're paying a Mac Pro already so expensive that you should have this inside, you know? That's why some users still use their silver Macs, the, the old machine oh, with like yeah, Intel yeah. CPUs, etc. And then they just add dual GPUs, they put power supply on top in order to supply all the power. And that's it. They have like really good machine that in terms of render power, it's really capable and up to the level of, of today's needs. You, I mean, if you have like two GPUs, you can have two 1080 Ti's or something and get really good Octane bench out of them. It's re it's really good solution. But if you have a new Mac, uh, there is a bit of an issue expanding it because you need to go through Thunderbolt. And as someone asked, are there any enclosures for multi GPUs? There are some of them, but they are really expensive, and you might get into situations where you physically plug three or four cards, but then your computer doesn't see that and you need to update to certain OS. You need certain specific fixes in order to make OS see those cards and use them. And actually the stability with more cards you add, the stability is, is, is let's say, more and more fragile. Mm -hmm. 
I think we made like five cards running from eGPU, but I wouldn't advise anyone to do this. If you are on Mac, get one card and get render node. Yeah. One thing that I have to say, actually, because we talk about Mac, because I have a friend that will actually uh, want to kill me if I don't say that. There is also the um, Hackintosh, okay? So it's a PC with a Mac installed on that. And we have a good friend, uh, a good friend with Macs. Uh, actually, this is the musician that does uh, all the music uh, of the trailers I do. And he is uh, s uh, specialized into that. He built uh, um, Mac Macintosh. Uh, actually, uh, not for a living, but yeah, he does that uh, as a business. And so if people are interested, we can actually advise uh, someone good with that. I don't know how it will be good for uh, GPU rendering, but actually it will allow you to run uh, Mac OS on a PC setup, which could be uh, interesting. It's the, maybe the best of both worlds for the people who are already attached to Mac OS. Yeah, just don't ad advertise this too much because it's completely illegal from uh, Apple's yeah. side. <laughs> yeah, they, 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 they came up with a lawsuit for the company who was who were building like Hackintoshes, basically a PC with Mac OS, and <laughs> and this doesn't end uh, didn't end very good for them for that okay. company. It it just vanished out of. Yeah, he is not a company, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So yeah, that was the topic about eGPU. I think it's nice for a laptop, and it's uh, it makes it an e easy upgrade because you actually don't have to change the case, change your motherboard. This is also one thing because if you have like a motherboard and a case that does not allow you to add one more card, and your all your PCI ports are stuck, so you cannot even add a riser, you can use this Thunderbolt, which is also a good way to add one more power thing but um, yeah. yeah it's it's re it's really sad that those solution doesn't work like plug and play even I think Razer has an eGPU devices that should perfectly work with their computer however it's not that if you want to plug it you need to like reboot the computer and sometimes the connection is lost and etc I mean it works in most cases but it's not as stable as having GPU properly connected into your motherboard yeah, that's one that's thing one also I said about reactivity here. It's when we start here, we start to talk about things that miss this advantage about reactivity. Because your cars are directly plugged on the PCI Express. And when you don't do that, you can actually miss some reactivity. Means like if you turn around your scene, you're moving a lot of stuff and you're doing a lot of things on heavy scenes. All these heavy scenes need to be recent or also, of course, it's just, uh, it depends what, how you configure Octane, could, could just change what was updated. But if you restart your render, um, your render, you know, your live viewer, you ah. will need reactivity to see the first image fast. And all these things that you add in between your uh, CPU and your GPU is going to make uh, less reactive uh, things, which has yeah. not much importance if you render a long render, let's say uh, five minutes under on under time you know you will not see that too much be because maybe it will take 30 seconds for the cars to start running and you will lose these 30 seconds for all the other cars but you will still have four minutes and a half that it will actually be there and running but if you now under quick scenes like 20 seconds one minute th this is crazy because then you're mi you're actually missing like half of the under time for the scene to transfer if this is gigabytes of data. So that, that's where we miss a bit of uh, reactivity. And now we talk, can talk a bit about the cluster. So the cluster, you may have seen that already on the internet. It looks a bit like that. Uh, it, it looks a bit actually, it looks how you want it to look, okay? okay? There is no <laughs> official cluster uh, look because the cluster is, uh, you could do that, do that with a uh, structure made of wood, okay? So this is really uh, up to you. But this is like sell, sold by a brand, which I don't remember which actually. It's uh, Ampheltech. How much? What, how, what is it? It, uh, it was Ampheltech that they sell this. Yeah. So that's basically they just sell the structure of metal and with this uh, splitter. So the idea is that it uses a system of splitter. So the splitter is a riser, but like a hub of riser. So you plug that into one PCI, and this PCI that we see here, you plug that on your motherboard, and it will extend to four uh, risers, 
that you will put on your uh, cards. And these cards, because you have no space, the reason why you use that is because you have no more space into your computer, okay? And you put them all on uh, whatever it is, wood, metal, even on the floor if you wish. <laughs> and uh, you can, no, but I saw actually people attaching them like uh, with no respect, with just like plastic uh, things, you know, with, when they do uh, mining, you can see really crazy installations and they just make them hang in the air, just like that with plastic uh, attached to it. And uh, so, yeah, you can do it as you want. But the problem is that um, you see here, it is, uh, we will see that a bit later, okay? We will talk about the PCI Express ports and how it works. But the thing is that here, this is a time 16, okay? So you, your, your uh, graphic card, the parts that you plug on the motherboard have like pins and they are made to be a 16 lane. So you plug that on 16, 16, 16, that works. But then, all of that, them are here connected to this, and I think this is like times one, or even I think this is maybe times four. But this is six four. Yeah, yeah, I have this exact model, so basically you have. It's four, yeah. Yeah, only four. Yeah, so you're you're actually dividing the PCI ports from four cards to uh, only four uh, PCI Express, and we will see why it's important just after, okay? But uh, this is crazy because it creates a bottleneck, especially when you have a big scenes, because uh, all the data needs to go through them. And then when they come back, they are all going through this little uh, shit. <laughs> and this is really like uh, making the thing uh, slow. So this is a, uh, the reason of a bottleneck. And uh, it may be OK, uh, again, like if you have uh, small scenes, because there is not a lot of data that goes through this, uh, this PCI port. But if you go with a big scene, that will really make the scene slower to refresh and you're losing reactivity. So it's not a very good deal. And one uh, thing to mention mm -hmm. regarding the lens, if, if, if you're offering this as a solution and someone might consider, uh, it seems that in the future as Octane is, is developed, we see more and more dependability on the uh, amount of lanes uh, that connects GPUs to C CPU. And I think in version 4, when you are going to have out-of-core geometry, when you might want to load out-of-core uh, textures and other effects, maybe AI is going to move to do a bit more work. These lanes are going to, uh, bottleneck lanes, these lanes are going to have more and more impact. So having GPU sit seated at X8 or even X16 is, is really the preferred setup, especially if you have a good motherboard that already allows you to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what I can just say about this is that it's an economic system because, of course, you don't spend a lot. You just buy for the, high, the, high, the splitter, you know, and this, is, yeah. this costs nothing. And you don't it, have to it's spend... It actually costs. It, uh, the splitter itself is actually 200 bucks. Oh, uh, really? It might be a bit more. And that GPU cluster, I think it's five, 500 without shipping and taxes. So when you consider this, that you need to spend two or 500 for expanding to four GPUs, it might be actually worth to get bigger motherboard up front and pay, let's say, two or 300 more than use this and lose performance. Because as you mentioned, you bottleneck everything. This this uh, GPU cluster cost, I think, four or five hundred at this least. This piece from of the metal. Company. This piece of metal. Yes. Oh my god. Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> Sorry. so one takeaway: if you're really looking to expand to, to four GPUs or something, better invest into good motherboard that costs you four or five hundred dollars, and you will be able to do that without headache. And this. I mean, it has a lot of drawbacks. For instance, that splitter uh, uh, that you showed below, uh, I have it right now and I tried to connect it a few days ago. And the problem was is that I had the smallish machine, mini ITX build that I want to be a portable machine and I just wanted to test the splitter. And the thing was that those those wires between your host card and uh, GPU rises, they are, I think, 30 centimeters, even less. So if you do not have 
really pre-planned, really good plan for how to fix those GPUs on top of your host machine, it will be very, very tight because you, you will have a lot of cables and these cables are very fragile. If you twist them a bit, they just lose the contact. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and maybe you want to do that with uh, just wood pieces. <laughs> that might be better than the... <laughs> I, I don't know if you want to burn your house, but <laughs> it's up to you. <laughs> Yeah, all right. So, um, okay, so that was economic, but it is noisy, still hot, yeah. because you actually put all these cars uh, somewhere close to your desk and out of nothing. So they collect uh, directly the dust. Uh, they, make, they are becoming hot and close to you. Uh, it's not like they are isolated in a case. And this is very fragile and you lose the reactivity because they share the lands. And also uh, it's uh, using... Uh, uh, X1 splitters, and uh, no, yeah. yes, uh, X1 or X4. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I mean, like, if you have four cars going into a four time four, uh, it makes like uh, they are all going by, by uh, X1 or something. It's close to that. Anyway, okay, let's go on the open rig. So the open rig actually is a solution that I wanted to do. Uh, I wanted to create this because I was inspired by the. Um, people doing mining so many people doing mining they do this and what they do is that they have the motherboard that is just sitting here and uh, the the psu power supply is just next to it they put all the cars next to each other with a little space and uh, they connect that uh, here with the power and at the bottom with a riser and this riser is uh, not a x16 it's a x1 okay so it looks like that it looks like that. So you've got like a USB. Um, this you plug the GPU here and it goes by a USB cable to uh, the times one. OK, so you can see before we were s for people who don't really understand yet. This is a times four. OK, I don't know if we say times or X. I don't know, uh, but I think it means a bit the same um, here. It's like a four. This is a 16. This is one. So you can see that really it's logical always. Uh, we can see that already visually that is not going to transfer the same amount of data, you know. And uh, this actually, uh, who use that is the miners because the, when you do mining, it just the 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 the, the data that actually uh, is transferred is not heavy, okay? It's really small, and so for them it does not matter if they have uh, X1, X16. It's really the same for them because the data is really small. And it goes through internet. It's not. It's not a big deal. But for us doing Honda Octane and uh, actually having big scenes, it matters a lot. And this will also be the re the the reason of a bottleneck. So you may want to actually use uh, uh, risers like that. But then you enter into other problems. For example, because this one is not uh, you have this one is not a powered uh, riser. It's uh, sh so it's shielded. So there is inside. If you open the, the thing, you will see there is aluminium, because when these risers are too close to each other or they, they cross each other, it can create create interference, and uh, you can lose data. You the, the, it can crash. It, you can have problems. So what you do is that inside there is uh, aluminium that protects it from doing interference. But the problem is that this one don't provide the um, the power and so you can go for this one but this one are not shielded but they have an, an extra power okay and uh it's called molex but these things are so bad that actually uh tom yourself i think uh, you heard experience of them like burning of yeah uh, yeah actually this power uh, this extra power is not needed i think in, in most cases, it was added for miners, again, for the same problem that I mentioned before, that some cards, especially MD cards with certain driver release, they used to take more than PCI standard was created for. I mean, more than 70 watts through the PCI slot. And that's why these things were added. And some of those rises are actually very bad in terms of, let's say, they add the resistance, and when you have a resistance, sometimes you lose a bit of energy. So 
in, on some risers you will see additional power plug, but if you have really good riser, and I mean really good that costs, I don't know, 50 bucks, 100 bucks, okay. but that again elevates the price quite a lot. If you have really good riser, you can make it without any additional power, but just keep in mind that the longer riser you have, again, as you mentioned, it is thing as an interference that creates a some kind of crosstalk between those cables and sometimes that uh, results in stability. And another thing is that if you have too, too small of it, you will not be able to place your cards neatly. You will need to create some kind of an arc case and then plug them in a very strange ways. Yeah. And uh, just to show you a bit, uh, because the thing is, if I say about the the the, the power, is because um, you're not. If you want this setup, is not to put three cards. It's not to put four. It's to put seven or yeah. eight. And if you start to do seven or eight cards on a weatherizer on all the PCI uh, Express, uh, that's where I was a bit wondering about the the power and stuff. But just to show people a bit, when I was doing this research, I created this little Cinema 4D scene. <laughs> and um, basically, I made, uh, with Espresso, I made uh, that I could see the length of the spline. So if I was moving this, uh, this, this, this point, I could see, you see, like the length in live of, the, of my setup. So I could see how, how long the cable will be and how curved it will be and it will be if it will touch or not the cable next to it and uh, <laughs> that's what i did um to to know uh, like the length of the cable and if they will be too long or not so here i could see that for example uh the two in the the three in the middle could be 20 centimeters then 25 uh this one could be 25 this one 25 or so and this one 30 and if i place the motherboard here or there the length will adapt so that's uh, the complexity of actually uh, building this kind of stuff. You need to think about many factors. It's not easy to set up, but it's, uh, it's still a cheap option to put that much card into a space. It does not make it like very solid. So if you travel with, you're still going to become crazy. And I don't mention like if you travel with that and that day it's raining, <laughs> you become even more crazy about uh, putting that in, in Berlin with no elevators, you know. <laughs> you can imagine this, the situation. Anyway, so that's the open rig. And I, as I said, uh, this open rig, you, we could sp spend one hour just to talk about that. Honestly, it's a, it's a big topic. Um, so let's move on for the next uh, thing. That's the server. And uh, so, yeah, we know some people using that. Uh, so it's good for everything. Uh, you've got a lot of PCM lines because you're using the big Xeon. So um, we will again explain a bit later what is this PCI uh, Express uh, lanes. Uh, it's uh, the downside, the, the, the cons are that it's very expensive because you spend uh, for the special case, a special motherboard, you're going to buy a big Xeon and big Xeon, uh, each Xeon, if you don't want a, a shitty one, but you want a good one with a good frequency, you will actually spend a lot of money just to get a good frequency on this uh, Xeon. And it's still uh, noisy and still heavy. It's very heavy to carry something like that, I guess. And so what you need to be careful about is the CPU frequency because it's Xeon and it's very costly to get a good frequency on a Xeon. So, yeah. And you can use this uh, reference card from the editions. So the air is going directly at the outside of the case. Technically, you can use non-reference GPUs as well because most of those server cases will have three or four fans in front and they blow a lot of airflow through the case. So I've seen some companies who made these uh, fitted with non-reference GPUs and they actually scored pretty good results. But one note about those about this direction, if, if you are looking forward to take it, first of all, you are going to pay a lot for for server motherboard and, and, as you mentioned, server CPUs. But one of the biggest downsides that it is made by design to be used in temperature-controlled rooms and server rooms, and it's going to be very noisy, it's going to be, yes, stable, it's going to be very effective, 
but at the same time, it's it's going to be annoyingly loud. So it depends. If you have room, if you have IT personnel, etc., this is the solution for you, and you can stack them and use them for for really good jobs. But it's not really the best thing for a freelancer who wants to have his computer by his table. Mm-hmm. Actually, I know a freelance who have that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I know a few as well. But if you try to speak with them on the microphone, you cannot hear them. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, and um, yeah. Also, what I have to say is that since you have big Xeon, if you have a good ones, and you can store like uh, eight or seven cars or uh, nine, whatever it is, the number of PCI you've got, you've got a killing machine actually. It's killing for CPU rendering or simulations because you have a crazy amount of cores and you've got all the GPU power. So as you said, the downside is the everything you mentioned, but it's also like a killing machine. So it's potentially yeah. a, a good thing, potentially. Depends like, yeah. uh, and also it will cost a lot to get a uh, good results. So um, depends for who, but it's not to put at the trash. I mean, this is something to consider definitely. Yeah, exactly. Uh, one thing to mention, not for this generation, but it exists or existed single slot cars directly sold by the manufacturers. So you don't have to cut them by yourself to, and you know something about that, Tom. <laughs> if you can yeah, get, uh, yeah. These are, I think, these are really old. It's just like GT 880s or something like. I don't even know exact number, but uh, in this generation, there is a card called 1070 Katana. It is a single slot air cooled card. But then again, if if I were to build something like this, why you would want to build with seven single slot cards if you can have four dual slot cards and have more VRAM at your disposal? So basically, this is a limited, let's say, solution. There are some people who add single slot quadros, but this is getting crazy expensive. It is, again, a bit noisy, and you need a special workload to benefit from that. Yeah, definitely. Uh, But I think there was new cars like this, no, on this generation, I'm not too sure. Yeah, yeah, it was 1070 Katana. Yeah. It's if if you look at the Google, you can find and probably show on stream. But basically, that's a single slot GPU with single uh, lower style cooler, and it emits all the air out of the case. So there is a solution. But again, why to buy seven ten seventies when you can have four ten eighty Ti's? Definitely. Okay, here is a picture for those interested. Uh, it, I'm just saying it's something to keep an eye on because maybe in the future that can also become a little bit better and it yeah. exists so don't, don't need to talk about it too much but just like something to consider and uh, all right so now little talk about these PC lines what they are how we use them and uh, why we want to be careful about them all right so so there is a uh, four type of uh, PCI lanes, okay? There is times one, times uh, four, times eight, and times 16. If you've got just one card and you plug it on your motherboard, uh, it's going to be uh, times 16, okay? And that represents the number of lanes. And once I talk with you, uh, Tom, and you explain me that in a way that was really understandable and, uh, and um, and this is what this this kind of explanation that I want to, to give to people. So you've got to think of that like a, a road or, or just a lane on a highway. Okay. So you've got uh, here is like a small road of campaign. You know, like a rural. Uh, I don't know if you say a campaign. Uh, it's got like a little road uh, in the countryside, <laughs> and uh, basically you've got this uh, speed. So you got single direction, du- du- uh, dual direction. You can see already the bandwidth. So it, it counts in megabytes, okay? Uh, it's not a lot. And um, and here you've got like the maximum speed, or actually, actually the two days maximum speed, and it goes uh, to gigabytes. So it's like uh, basically a highway with different lanes. So if this highway is very large, you've got a lot of cars going at the same time with no problem, and there is no bottleneck, it means like they're, they are not like waiting behind each other. And uh, 
in between you've got like a variation of it so that the times four is going to be the minimum uh, basically using octane uh, it was uh, once advert um, uh, there was like uh, I saw a developer on the forum, a developer of uh, Otoy. He said directly like the times one you can forget for Octane. The minimum is times four, and even times four depends the the, the scene how big it is. Just for giving you a comparison, sometimes I render animation that are up to 10 gigabytes or more than 10 gigabytes of data. And if you're going to transfer them at this speed, it's going to be pretty slow. And what we see here is actually not the real speed, because even when I am using like times 16, this is like other, you have other bottlenecks. You have many reasons to have bottlenecks. If you do network rendering, your bottleneck is the Ethernet cable. And I can see that I am stuck at one gigabyte per second for sometimes 30 seconds. And uh, if on top of that, you add the, the, the bottleneck of the PCI Express itself, you're going to be in a bad situation. So basically on a big computer, you want to have like um, one times 16, that's going to be the first. And then you've got three on times eight. If you're, and there is also a relationship with the, the CPU. If you get like a high end CPU, it has 40 PCI lines. And if you get like a medium range, it has 28. And here is the combination, how it looks when you've got uh, one card, two cards, three cards, four cards. One card, two cards, three cards, four cards. And um, I think it's pretty much self-explanatory about the, the speed. Uh, and there is also one thing to add is this uh, PLX chip. But before talking about this detail, maybe you want to add something about this uh, topic? Uh, one thing to mention is a lot of guys asking you know, on our Facebook group or in forums, like, will this affect rendering speed itself? And the answer is no. You can have as much as you want cards, as much as your operating system and as much as your motherboard and CPU allows you to have, as much as your BIOS are going to see. And you can plug them in X1 and you will have the same rendering speed as mentioned. The difference is going to come when you have a big scene, you want to make a change and you want to send information in and out. Uh, one thing to mention regarding to this, that if you are if, if you are looking just to render a static image, if you are not looking to have a most fluid workstation, and if you are building a computer to have it as a render node, you can have less lanes. That's no problem. If you are going to set the, the render and leave it for, let's say, two hours to render, then it's fine to have even on X1. The issue comes when you want to have interactivity when you want to change everything and you don't want to wait additional time for for GPUs to start working because that's when you when you actually waste your own time while you're working and what makes you really tired at the end of the day because you might end up working less just by investing a couple of hundreds more into let's say better CPU or better motherboard yeah it's really about the reactivity it's like uh, yeah. when you're going to make a change, every time you load the scene also is the time it goes into the graphic cards. Once it's into the graphic cards, the data is the same. And yeah. then the data sending back is just samples. Samples are nothing for the computer. It's the CPU yeah. then uh, compiling them together. So when it sends back the image, all the samples, nothing changed. But when, you will, uh, when it will stop and start the next frame, that's going to matter again. And uh, yeah. when you're going to change the camera into your scene, that's going to matter again. Resending the scene, yeah. etc. And so, as you mentioned, if at the end of the day you waste like one minute here, two minutes there, five minutes there, and it depends on he how heavy is the scene, uh, the, the more heavy it is, the more you're going to wait. And all this time yeah. you waste is, uh, is crazy. Yeah, I mean, minutes, it, it's... it's just really for for simple scenes it's some heavy scenes that i don't know that fill your 11 gigabyte gpu to the top and scenes that has to do scenes that where cpu have to do a lot of translation for certain elements it might take like a few minutes to update and there are some edge cases where where guys are waiting for nearly like half an hour for their gpus just to start working 
It, and one thing to note is that if you have a lot of out of core textures, it means, or in the future you will have like out of core geometry in version four, it means that much more data will be needed to move from CPU, from RAM to GPU. And the lower the, uh, the lane count you have, the more time you are going to spend while you're working. And basically you will move something and you will have to wait or you will have to, to let's say, you will see less samples being made because when you enable out of core textures, it will cut your, uh, it will influence your render speed and basically it, it will cut like 50% of performance. But if you will have a lot of uh, out of core uh, textures, for instance, this influence is going to be bigger and bigger and sometimes it might be 30 or 40 percent if, if you have really a lot of textures yeah, out of core. One thing to say also for people using Octane is that if you can avoid using out of core, avoid it. It's not because yeah. it's there that you have to use it and like, oh yeah, I have a 64 gigabyte of RAM and I don't have a lot of VRAM. Let's use a out of core. No, seriously, try avoid it because this is uh, possible to do it, but you will it will lower your render time and it will make your you will waste time. So if you can just be more smart the way you build your scene, it's important. That's one thing. So this is not a miracle solution that helps in every situation. Yes, it can help in some situation where you cannot do better. But if you can just reduce the resolution of your maps, just reduce the poly count or use better the render instance, you're going to make a better job and go faster. That's one thing. Also, the second thing is the preparation, the preparation time. Recently, I, well, I did a trailer when I had to render more than 300 materials and not simple materials. No, no, there were Uber materials, uh, mixed materials that were like uh, really pretty big, you know, more than 300 thousands of objects. And I was below uh, one or two minutes of preparation time. And recently uh, we've got Maxim. He sent me uh, for one of his clients. So he did not make the scene send his himself, but just an example. The scene was very simple. It took one time um, 19 minutes before you could see the first picture. So the way you build your stuff is also have a, the most influence. You can have the best computer you want or the shittiest one, and you can do uh, you, you can do better or worse based of how you prepare your scene. So that's the number one thing also. So be careful on the amount of materials and their textures size and the number of polygons and if you do a render instance or not, this kind of things influence a lot the preparation of time and the render speed. That's not only about the material. That was why I, saw, I showed the example with the laptop. All right, so, so um, one thing to add is the PLX chip. And uh, what I understand about that is that it's a, a little stuff that goes on the uh, on the motherboard, it's close to the CPU, and what it does is that it's, it adds an additional lane to the uh, C, to the CPU, and uh, y if there is exceeding uh, la lanes uh, requirement, it can use the PLX, and the PLX is equivalent to X16, so it has 16 lanes to the PSU, but basically it's like a buffer. So a buffer is like uh, like a loading time when it loads, poof, it goes to the other, poof, it goes to the other. Can right. I give a, a bit of an example uh, what's happening here? Yeah, please do. Uh, the analogy in real life would be if you have a crossroad and let's say four lanes cross another four lanes and you have a, how is that thing that is Around uh, regulated? Yeah, no, 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 that... Uh, thing with three lights that uh, 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 that that says which direction to go etc oh street i don't know the uh, street lamp <laughs> yeah yeah light, whatever light street lamp whatever light stop yeah yeah stop stop light <laughs> which basically says what direction to go now if you have a crossroad it's very slow to move in and out it's it's not efficient and plx chip is basically a roundabout that allows information to go much faster in any direction so this is like 
you are not getting more lanes from CP. You you are just getting overall more lanes in that crossroad in order to to move the data pretty fast. So I think Tom's Hardware, one of the biggest sites um, in tech industry, they done a really good uh, review of this technology a few years ago, and they concluded that PLX chips actually add just few percent of, of performance drop compared to uh, cards that are natively connected to CPU. So this is actually expensive thing to be added onto the motherboard. I think the scheme itself is like 50 bucks. So if you have some motherboard that have two of those, that's 100 bucks for the components, then for implementation, then for all the other things. So that's why like high-end motherboards cost you not 300 bucks, but five or 600 bucks. And actually that added complexity sometimes leads to certain problems as well. So when you are going to pick a computer and when you're considering whether to go like for four GPUs or for more GPUs, always think about the future, like what it is going to lead for, because I think you guys have this issue with PLX chip or some other issues that you cannot solve, and it's leading to some crashing systems. All right. So, um, all right. So one thing also that you can do when you are uh, facing problems with uh, not enough lanes or stuff like that, you can also increase the max styling samples and deactivate the minimize network uh, traffic. That's two things you can yeah. do in Octane because the, this principle is that it's how much, um, let me show you. Oops. So over there into the settings of Octane, you can go into the kernel and here you've got the parallel samples. By default is on eight and the parallel samples, it means like how much samples are calculated in parallel on each graphic card. And the max style sample is how big is this style uh, of the samples. So basically, uh, will it be like, uh, yeah, it's like, or it is calculating little parts of the image and a lot of them at the same time, or it calculating like a bigger tiling and uh, also in parallel. So basically, if you want to, and, and the, the minimize net traffic, um, I don't remember exactly what it is, but it's like, uh, oh yeah, it's like, um, it's not sending back the data through the network as long as it's, it did not calculate the, uh, a certain amount of data, basically. And so yeah. it, it makes it like, it's, you know, we were talking about this buffer, you know, that's sending the data. Basically, you are making the GPU works longer before it is actually sending the data. And so, as we said, sending the data back to the CPU is not much because it's just pictures, you know. But uh, it's, it's, we are not talking about the preparation time. It's when it is calculating the picture. And so if you want the cars to work longer and then send the data, you can actually work it out with the parallel uh, samples, the max style samples, and minimize net traffic to be uh, activated or not. In my case, I, I think minimized net traffic should pretty much always be deactivated, honestly. Uh, I use network rendering a lot, and I saw that uh, it's better to not do it. Um, it depends on some cases, the size of the scene. Yeah, but, basically uh, your scene doesn't update on your master machine that often, uh -huh. but because you send data less frequently, it it is, it is, let's say, less time wasted for GPUs to wait. Yeah, I think, uh, it's, it, it, I think it waits that all the GPU or something have finished their samples before it rush. And it, it, it's something interesting to use when you have a lot of machines in network. But if yeah. you have one machine, it, it means nothing, of course. But if, it, if you are under a network render, it has an impact. But most of the time, it will be deactivated. And I think when you want to activate it is when you have a lot of machines. Because then they are doing concurrency on the network. And uh, instead of being like, like this, they will be more like, okay, now I finish, now I finish, now I finish. It will be more like this. So the repartition of the network data coming will be uh, a bit more uh, slowing down, but maybe it has yeah. a sense when you have a lot of data to send and a lot of network on there. And uh, yeah. I think the disadvantage of this, if you leave those package being big and send less often, uh, you might see uh, more usage of your memory in a way. 
So that's, I think, the only disadvantage that you get out of this solution. So if if you have seen on the limit of your VRAM, on the limit of your system memory, etc., try to play with those settings as well to free up some space. I think that was mentioned somewhere in the manual, if I remember correctly. Yep. All right, last topic before we can actually make a good round of question, I think, is the network rendering. I just wanted to mention something because I... Uh, Again, I use, uh, I don't know if I can actually show this on the webcam, but uh, yeah, I've got, oh yeah, I've got this hub, okay, it's a shitty hub, just one gigabyte, okay, but you see that I, I have actually quite some machines that are connected to it, and it makes a difference which kind of cable you have, so you've got different categories of cable, I think uh, there is the category, I, I don't want to say bullshit, but I think category 4 is uh, 100 uh, megabytes, Category 5 is 1 gigabyte and category 6 is 10 gigabyte. And of course, you've got to have um, uh, the Ethernet ports on your motherboard need to be the same. Okay, you, it's worth nothing to put 10 gigabyte cable on a 1 gigabyte Ethernet uh, port. And the hub also itself, so what I just showed you, need also to be uh, the same. Okay, so if you want to have 10 gigabytes, of, uh, you will need to have uh, good motherboards, good cables and good hub. That will cost a lot. I have just one of my motherboard that is 10 gigabytes. So I've got just one cable 10 gigabytes, but everything else is one gigabyte. And I can tell you directly that when you're using network rendering, it has a very, very, very big impact. If I now send big scenes on the render engine, I can tell you that sometimes my second or third machine is starting to render after 30 seconds. And if the render was fast, the first machine already completed almost the render before the others are start starting to kick in, you know? And so this, so what you want to avoid is actually everything 100 megabytes. You want to remove that. You don't want that. The minimum you want, the default is one gigabyte. And if you can later, because you it will cost a lot and you will need that on every motherboard or you will need a special, uh, you can actually put a Ethernet port on the PCI, but because we are putting so much card, we don't have free PCI to put that. But if you can have 10 gigabytes uh, Ethernet, it will make a very, very big difference. Because uh, I tell you, me today, this is my bottleneck. If I, I cannot render faster because of that, because I could have like 10 more machines, this will still be my bottleneck. So that's one thing. One of, the, one of the things regarding to, to network rendering is basically j just to understand for some... When you're having two machines, if if you have motherboards that have 10 gigabyte ports, you can connect them directly. I don't think that you do not. Do, I don't think that you need a hub for that. However, there's one thing to remember is that uh, with slower interface, with slower interface, you will underutilize your other machine because it will wait for time to kick in, as you say, and basically you spend like five or ten grams for computer and you use like five of them only because you cannot provide information fast enough so that's why some users who cheap out on machines they render on both of them as a separate instances rather than using network rendering so that's another solution to come around this problem yeah but uh, network rendering is so great that uh, if you want to uh, if you can avoid splitting the renders on different machines is still best yeah. all right uh okay now <clears throat> the next topic will be to talk about our other component and stuff i will go back to the chapter to the chapters now so we can see a bit where we are uh, we talk about gpu vram out of core pci PC, uh, plx network renderings we talked about the pcs pc uh, setups and now we are here on the other components. So we're pretty much at the half of it. We will need to speed up a bit more because it starts to be a bit long. But we wanted this video to be pretty full of information because uh, then later it can serve as a reference. So, Maxime, do you have uh, some questions for, for us at this point? Yeah, I have a few questions. Uh, some were already answered. Um, I think some will be answered too in the other part. So Chris asked uh, if he can have multiple uh, GPUs with only uh, 800 watts. Uh, yes, you can. Actually, with 
GPU power usage, uh, there is this misconception that if you if you run four GPUs, you need one and a half thousand power supply. However, in reality, um, I, re I have a, a render box with four GPUs, and it uses like 800 watts at most. With, and this is like what it's uh, drawn from the wall. Actually, seven GPU machine overclocked on all GPUs by like 20%, six core CPU, is only going to total at around 1,400 watts. So generally, if you want to build with four GPUs, 1,000, 1,200 watts is more than enough. And if you want to build seven GPU machines, 1,500, 1,600 watt PSU is enough for Octane Render machine. Now, one thing to note regarding to the power supply sizes, first of all, you, you would like to get the best you can afford in a way, because there is more than the power uh, power measure on the power supply, but actually how clean that power is. So if you are looking for stability, if you are not trying to cheap out and to get the machine that is going to crash a few times in a day, don't save out on power supply. Just get one really good unit. Another thing is when you're adding power supply, look at the efficiency curve. If you want to... to to use to, for your machine to use as little energy as possible, or let's say to waste as little energy as possible, most of power supplies are most efficient at around 50 to 60 percent load. So if you have four GPU machine that is going to use around let's say eight nine hundred watts, maybe one kilowatt at most, you buy bigger supply for that reason. But that doesn't mean that four GPU machine needs one and a half thousand watt power supply okay. basically one car draws under 200 even if it's overclocked in octane render itself yeah but that's the thing with octane render that's what i said before is that octane render yeah. is not so crazy honestly when i was exactly. mining mining i was seeing that all my cars were 250 watts per card for real from the wall i could see that and also i could see that uh from the uh, afterburner or precision X, you know, it was giving me these yeah. stats for real. So 250 yeah. watts per card. If I yeah. overclocked, I was at 300 watts per card. And if I, so what I did is that to downclock and uh, downclocking gave me like, so at 80%, it gave me yeah. uh, 200 watts per card. And yeah. when I do Octane, Octane seems like a brief, you know, <laughs> it's really, uh, it's yeah. not so crazy. Yeah. Maybe we can... Doesn't. Yeah. Maybe yeah. we can oh. jump quicker into the questions. Sure, uh, sure, no problem. We want to move uh, on the other topics. So I think we can avoid the question about how do you grow such magnificent bird like Tom? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it happened. You know, I have long hair, but they somehow slipped under. <laughs> 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 I'm almost bald from the radiation. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> yeah. Mo Moko Freak, so uh, Tom um, uh, asked you if uh, you would recommend buying the 10 series now or if you should wait for the new series, series of GTX. It depends on your needs. I mean, if, if you need render power like right now, uh, I think it's, it's not a bad idea to grab those cards and then they still offer pretty good value the thing is that i always start a um, conversation about building and about recommendation like what are your long-term needs if you're going to buy a single gpu and if you're going to to look rendering with only that gpu for let's say three or four years it's no problem but if you are going to buy like three, four, or maybe seven GPU machine, it's always good to wait at the point where those cards are like on the edge and a lot of them are in in the wild so you can choose from them and you can get them for a good price because now we are on the end of the cycle. So that's one reason why we see less cards. Another thing is that they are still really popular for some mining farms and miners are buying them at really good prices and then we have issues with the memory uh, availability 
So to get a card for good price at this time is really difficult. So if you find a good deal and if you're planning to use only that one card and if you can fit the scenes, like why not? There's no reason to use like latest and greatest computer or latest and greatest component. It, it's 11 GPU, 11 gigabyte cards like 1080 Ti for instance. It's a great GPU that is going to stand for years. But again, you probably going to miss some AI features uh, that on the new cards will be integrated and some features that let's say Autoy or other companies are going to introduce in let's say a few months from now, they are probably going to run not so fast on those cards that exist at the moment. So it depends. If you need that power, buy them. If you can wait, if you do not have a client project that you need to finish, you can wait a bit. It's always good to know what's happening before you make these decisions. And people undervalue this, um, not trend, but like, update cycles that companies push their components for. I actually bought one of my cards at the end of the cycle and it, I was, you feel very unhappy when you realize that next day there are new cards released, but at the same time you can ask yourself if that's what you can afford and if it's the card that suffice for your current needs. So what's the problem? You wouldn't want to spend twice the money anyway, so what's the problem to have extra cards that cost twice more if you are not going to buy it. So it's yeah. all about your needs. Okay. Um, I think we covered the question about the how we can add a few external GPUs, so that's okay. Um, there is a question about the Intel, uh, the Intel i5 and i i7, but I think we will cover it into the other component part. So maybe wait a bit. Can you see, um, uh, ask the question so we know what it's about? Yeah, uh, is it better to uh, have an i5 or, or an i7 and how much it impacts uh, the GPU? I can um, answer this pretty quickly. Uh, it doesn't matter whether you have i5 or i7 uh, because those differ mostly in uh, core count and thread count. I still run uh, i5 on my old machine that is five generations old, and it still do pretty good job. Now the difference is in terms of frequency. If you have, if you can have, let's say i3 or i5 that runs at very high frequency, it's better than spending on i7 or i9 because basically with i7 or i9, you are going to have more cores that are going to be sleeping. For instance, you will have 12 cores, but 11 of them will be sleeping, and the one core is going to run on the uh, slower speed, meaning that your CPU that you are going to pay five times more is going to do uh, less good job compared to the CPUs that cost a few times less. So there's no need to spend for expensive CPU if you're only using it for Octane Render. Now, the worth of spending that extra money if you need to do some simulations, let's say particles or other things. Okay, and uh, last quick question, maybe also um, in the topic of other components, and what's the top brand for fans about noise slash performance? Do you recommend some uh, fan brands? Fan. Fan. Fan brands. Fan brands. Oh, fan brands. Uh, it depends what you are going to use them for, but anything from Noctua, Noise Blocker, would fit the, the build depending on what you're building. If you're building water cooling stuff, I would look to those two brands first. Great, son. Do you have any question, Max, or we go for the next topics? We go for the next topic. Let's go. <laughs> so for the next topic, uh, we will talk about uh, CPU. So we already started to have some uh, beginning of answers. What I want to say about this is that basically uh, one mistake that many people does is to think that more cores is going to be better. Uh, you started to talk about this, Tom. 
But basically, the idea yeah. is that um, many and way too much, it's a problem actually, yeah? uh, but ma many uh, softwares don't use multi-trading well. So mm -hmm. um, what you want to do is you prefer, if you're using um, softwares that don't use multi-trading well, what you want is uh, less scores, but running faster. So how you can see that? You can see that with the uh, gigahertz, you know, the frequency. And uh, the higher, the better, because they will be kicking way faster, giving results way faster in, in comparison, like a, a Xeon. Many times, except if you are spending for the high end Xeon, but that costs like uh, 3000 per Xeon. Um, you're going to uh, have a lot of uh, cores doing nothing, as you mentioned. And I listed a bit uh, the kind of softwares that use multi-trading very well. So there is Udini. Udini is perfect for that. It really uses as much core as you have most of the time. Not on every node, but most of them are were very well multi-traded. You've got also Blackmagic Fusion or Nuke that is very well uh, multi-traded. And for example, World Machine when you are doing tiling terrains, okay? If you don't do tiling, you are still limited because every node, some of them are multi-traded, some are not. And you can see directly on the statistics, sometimes you are using like 16 cores, sometimes uh, 16 trade or 16 cores, no matter. And the, the next node is one, one, uh, one core. The next is 16, the next is four, the next is one. It's changing all the time because different tasks in the software are multi-traded or not. It's not only about the software, it's about the tasks themselves. And uh, the ones that are limited to four cores are actually, yeah, after effect, but after effect, some of them are not even using four cores. But Octane, what you can see is that when you are uh, sending the data, uh, so you're starting the render, the prepar and during the preparation, preparation times, you will never see more than four cores running. And that's pretty sad, but that's what it is. So you prefer to have like four cores or six cores running fast, instead of 12, 12, 20, 30 cores, and you will see a lot of them doing nothing. It's pretty sad to see. I have one of my machines that was like uh, um, eight cores, and every time I was seeing that was not used, it was like pretty sad. So on the next machines, I actually bought a, a CPU with less cores than the previous one, and I was more happy with the results. So the frequency is the most interesting things to see. Except if you use a lot, like when I say a lot, it means like 90% of your time, you are using Houdini. In this case, yeah, you can you can go with like a high number of cores. Um, but the rest of the time, if you're not using them like 90% of your time, but it's like the, the opposite, uh, you prefer to have less cores, but faster. And many, many applications only use one core. So if you are doing some stuff in like uh, even ZBrush or Cinema 4D, uh, only one is used, so this is actually the most sad things to see, but it's the reality. And uh, for the, the Xeon, big, big Xeon, as said before, you just need to be careful with the frequency, because more core does not mean it will be faster. And, um, and for AMD, uh, like the Ryzen, it follows the same principle. And uh, one thing that I can also mention before uh, uh, talking about other things is that Every year, um, Intel has a tick-tock principle. So one year, it will work on the performance. The next year, it will work on the stability, uh, reworking the, improving the temperatures and the power consumption. So there is a tick-tock, and this is one thing to consider when you are buying a CPU, is to uh, Intel CPU, is to see if you are into the performance uh, year or if you are on the stability year. Because this also matters for you. If, for example, you're, you are worrying about uh, stability, it's best to wait the next uh, generation. And if you are worried about performance, it's, way, it's sometimes also better to wait the next generation. Quick note regarding to CPU and, and performance and, let's say, choice aspect. If you are building a workstation, and as I mentioned, if you care about simulations and other things, yes, get the best CPU you can afford, especially if you are looking to use that machine for years and years. However, if you are looking to build a cheapish machine, like a render node or maybe additional machine that would just crush uh, auction render jobs, don't be afraid to go a few generations old, maybe 
rather than buying the last generation, get generation or two older CPU that is on on sale, you will pay very little and it will run, it will do the same job that new CPU is going to do for you. I mean, in often render, from one side, yes, we can say like, okay, it uses only one or two or maybe four cores at most, but at the second, from, from the other side looking, it's a good point for new users because they do not, they are not forced to spend a lot of money for CPU. As mentioned, I run five generation old CPU on some of my machines and I'm still very happy with it. I can get the most out of GPUs without even worrying to change the system. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Do you got anything else to say on the CPU? And if you guys have questions about CPU, don't hesitate to, to throw your questions. One thing that I want to say about this talk is that I want to avoid to talk about a specific CPU, like uh, the models yeah. and stuff. I want to, to explain more like the, um, some knowledge about concepts and logic. So then you can apply this concept and logic on any generation instead of telling you, OK, today the best CPU is this one and not this one, because it, it, the next year you will be lost again. Well, if you just understand the principle, then we are fine. Oh, one thing that we have to add is this uh, thing with the, the PCA lanes, okay? There you have to check also if you are doing a multi-GPU station, you want to have 40 PCA lanes. And you often find that only on the uh, high-end uh, CPU. All right. Yeah, this this is one of the more, more important things if you have more if you want to have more GPUs, another just to the same topic, just because you have good CPU doesn't mean that your motherboard is going to allow or to be more precise that the BIOS of that motherboard is going to allow you to connect the, that many GPUs. Because some people see, oh, this motherboard has a lot of uh, PCI slots or this CPU is very good. It doesn't mean that your system is going to be stable with that combination. Yeah. All right, next topic, because we try to accelerate a bit. Um, so about the RAM, my observation is that 16 gigabytes of RAM is really just if you're starting, because even in Photoshop, 16 gigabytes is nothing. In After Effects, it's nothing. In 3D, it's nothing. 16 gigabytes is uh, really only if you are starting and you don't have money but you should directly jump to 32 gigabytes if you plan to use this station for sure sure joke i don't know how you're living with professional programs if i open uh, uh let's say browser and all the tabs that i use daily <laughs> it will use more than 20 gigabytes <laughs> so <laughs> I, I i haven't even started to work with any of professional programs so i don't know how you can live with 60 gigabytes but i mean why not yeah, it's really just if you are starting and you don't have budget, but uh, clearly if you take things seriously, jump directly to 32. And 32 yeah. is not excellent, 32 will be okay. You, co you can actually work on big uh, resolution files in Cinema 4D, uh, in um, Photoshop. In After Effects, 32 is already nothing, you know. And in 3D, it's like an average, okay. So if you get very serious, it's like your profession and you want a good machine, go to 64. I have 64 on all my machines, except the render nodes. I have one of them that is 32 because a render node does not need a lot. You are not using it for everything. But um, it happened already for me that one scene I could not render on a render node because it had 30 gigabytes of RAM. So 32 is like really not a lot. Go with 64 if you take your work seriously because the task we are using with Photoshop, Cinema 4D, After Effects and all this stuff is requiring requiring a lot and i and i don't even mention what says tom about like you now you start using home at the same time <laughs> you yeah. go over the rooftop so 64 yeah. is the best and if uh, for certain case i will not recommend that to many people because also it costs a lot is 120 uh 128 gigabyte of uh, ram it can be useful for example i have hit myself uh, the limit of 64 when I was rendering in Octane, and at the same time, I was already preparing the frames in uh, After Effects at the same time. So one, on the same machine, I render on Octane, and at the same time, I open After Effects, and I'm working on After Effects, and I open Photoshop, and I am doing also preparation of other, other stuff, because you're multitasking, you know. And this is where you may 
enjoy to have more than 64. But this is a rare case, you know, and uh, you can still be fine with 64. So I would, I would uh, one say... Tip, yeah? hmm? One tip regarding to uh, RAM, if you have four slots, for instance, and if you want to buy a RAM, don't buy cheaper, but let's say less scattered RAM. I mean, you can buy 64 gigabytes in, let's say, two sticks or four sticks, or let's say four sticks and eight sticks. So always buy the the sticks that are much more dense that you need, so you would have extra slots to expand rather than to change them. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like on my last machine, I went for uh, uh, each um, I don't know in English, like each slot was uh, 16 gigabyte yeah. and so with times four it's 64 but i was i, I still now have room to add another 64 yeah. later and that's the exactly. best and now quickly what is this uh, things that i have here on the screen it's ecc so many times when you will find like a ram you will see that it's ecc ecc is for um servers it's for xeon if you're using i7 or stuff like that you don't want to have a uh, ram that is called ecc because it will just not work, I think, yeah? We will have uh, actual issues with that. So just forget about ECC if you don't have a server. And the frequency, the memory, uh, and stuff like this. So basically, mm, I, I read online that um, basically with, with uh, 2100 megahertz, you are pretty fine with that. You can go with uh, the, the higher tier, a little higher, which is 2,600 something megahertz. And I think you should stay in this range because they are also the cheapest. When you start to go to yeah. 3,000 to 200 megahertz, you will pay more the price for this and it does not result into best uh, performance. So you're actually yeah. really throwing money from the window. One thing to note, um, when you're spending more, uh, you're getting into this law of diminishing returns, meaning that you can spend twice much, but you are not going to get twice much of performance. And another thing, it's a tool. We need to understand that we built those machines to make work, not to to hit some record benchmarks. And if you're building for work, do not go on the bleeding edge, because on the bleeding edge, you will always get more stability issues. So keeping yourself with, let's say, 2,400 RAM is more than enough, and you will never notice too much of a difference with RAM that you will have to pay, let's say, twice more. And the difference is going to be stability because that fast RAM is going to crash more often. This is the sad reality, but just because you pay more, it doesn't mean you get more. You will not notice a lot of things. And you will notice when your computer is going to crash in the middle of the work. Yeah. And for what? Just because you wasted too much of money without thinking. Yeah. So about the amount of memory, I think we just said it. Basically, you want the maximum. And uh, you want to get what you want into four sticks. So if you go for 64, it's best to get four times 16. And if you go for 32, it's best to get four times eight uh, gigabytes. And uh, that's about it. Um, now about low profile, what is low profile? Personally, I have only low profile because you can see sometimes uh, there is gamers uh, sticks that looks very much like gamers. They have almost like neons on them. They have like colors and stuff. And they take actually a lot of space up to the point that if you don't have a water cooling on the CPU, but you have like this uh, CPU basic fan, it will actually not be able to fit all of them together because the RAM sticks are too high. So the low profile is just like they are shorter on, on the height. And uh, I use low profile. It means nothing else than the, the size of it. So it takes less, less space. That's it. And yeah. then quad channeling. What is quad channeling? There is actually three channeling also. But quad channeling is this uh, idea that if you've got four sticks and they are made from the same series. So if you can see the, the serial numbers, they are like ending by three, four, five, six. They are in the same series because you bought them together you should put them in a certain way on the, your motherboard like usually it's one on two so you've got like uh, one you leave a space then two you leave a space then three then you leave a space then four and um, it's going to work faster the question -like. and about ddr3 or ddr4 it's about which generation of cpu you have but uh, this question was more a question one year ago today it's no question you just get ddr4 because <laughs> it will be hard the setup where you still use ddr3 
and uh, we are done on the RAM. If you've got anything else to say, otherwise we go on the next topic. No, not really. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so now the last component we can talk about is this. Uh, whoops. Uh, is the the PSU? So PSU, we already mentioned that already. Um, no. Just one thing that we can mention about the PSU is these uh, things that they are gold, pl uh, platinum, titanium. So most of the time you want to get the um, you want you don't want to spend too much, okay? But if you have a good deal on platinum and titanium, it's the best you can get because it's about if I sp if I have like a 1,200 watts. Um, it's gonna draw more from the wall actually that if I have like a low tier, you know, like I have a silver or bronze uh, uh, PSU. If I if it was supposed to draw uh, 1000, it will actually draw 1100, you know, just for nothing. So you've got like an energy that is lost uh, just because your PSU is not good enough. And if you plan to render a lot and this is like uh, going to be uh, 24 hours by 24 hours, it matters because you better spend. Fifty dollars um, $50 or one hundred dollars more, but then at the end of the year, and uh, you will see the difference on your uh, on your uh, energy bill. Power you know? bill. Yeah, and uh, in some countries, like I was living in Germany uh, last year, and the price was like top two in Europe. So like it was so expensive. And I was happy that actually I didn't have to pay for it. <laughs> and I was happy that actually uh, uh, I had good, uh, I had titanium and platinum uh, PSU because uh, otherwise you're just wasting energy for nothing, and uh, it's bad for different reasons. One, one thing to add about power supplies is when you're choosing one, uh, I already mentioned like uh, there are efficiency curves. So there's one reason to buy oversized power supply just to run it at 50% load. It means that it's the best efficiency, but it's not actually the thing that you pay more for power. The thing with uh, high-end power supplies is they have much better ripple support. And with better ripple suppression, not support, better ripple suppression, you actually feeding much cleaner energy to your system and it doesn't fluctuate too much uh, crashing your system, meaning that you spend like a hundred or let's say hundred fifty dollars more per, per power supply, but at the same time you might avoid your system crashing in the middle of your work. So in the context of full build, let's say with four GPUs that is going to cost you six, seven, eight grand, that hundred dollar doesn't mean a thing. But it will mean a thing for you if your system crash on your best work you get for like few years and your name is put on that work to be finished in the, in a, in exact time. So always think about those things whether you really need to save on power supply because power supply is the same thing as a food for human. If you eat crappy food, you are, you will not have enough energy during the day to complete the task the same with C, with, with the same with power supply and saving 100 bucks it's not worth actually yeah all right so next thing maybe a quick talk about ssd i think uh, when you're building a honda node you don't care but when you're working on a workstation you care about that so quick quick stuff i can show you is how i do it myself so here I've got like my system, it is a 500 gigabyte SSD and it is a M2, so it's like the fastest possible. And uh, the M2 is a very small one that you put behind the graphic cards on the motherboard. Uh, I've got one, te one uh, tera of SSD here, one tera of SSD here, one tera, uh, two, three tera here of normal hard drive and one tera of SSD and one tera of SSD. So why I, do, I have this, I have one for uh, s storing the, s the frames and uh, one for my libraries and I've got uh, archives on the normal hard drives and I've got my uh, running projects that is synchronized on Dropbox on this uh, hard drive here. That's how I do and uh, about the brands personally I only have or almost have only uh, Samsung and um, I can definitely recommend that and uh, just don't go for the pro version usually just the Evo is enough um, I think it's about like the how long they live. Uh, they are guaranteed to live uh, longer on the 
on the pro version. And there is other brands. I have also one Corsair. Um, but I don't think we need to uh, go very long on this topic. We should accelerate a bit if we want to have all the topics uh, answered. Next thing that we didn't mention was the motherboard. Motherboard, you want a maximum of PCI uh, lane, uh, PCI uh, E ports if you want to have a multi GPU setup. And you don't want to actually, if it's a render node, you can get a, like a cheap one. But if you want to be serious and it's your workstation, there's really something to, to keep in mind that to, to have a good one. I have one of my motherboards that costs like 500. So it's really not something that is cheap. And uh, one thing you must also check is like if you have special cables. Uh, for example, I have a tablet that is USB-C. And I'm happy that I have the USB-C on one of my uh, motherboard. So that's about it. And if you, uh, Tom, have uh, things to say about motherboards. Yeah, regarding to motherboards, there is one important and I think key aspect is to look at the spacing between PCI E slots. Because most motherboards that support, let's say, three or four GPUs, they will be at what's known as a typical spacing of uh, uh, one slot that you plug the card, then one small slot, then again one big slot. And some motherboards have those with extra spaces. So if you have non-reference GPUs, you should be looking for extra space between your PCI slots where you are going to put those GPUs. If you are getting motherboard that has seven PCIe slots, for instance, it doesn't matter that you will be able to plug seven GPUs because that motherboard might not allow uh, to be even booting with more PCIe devices or you could not physically fit all those cards and you might need risers and other things. So always try to read manuals, always try to read uh, official website in order to get all that information or simply ask on our group because how it looks, it doesn't mean that it's going to work as it should. Yep. Uh, what are the components we missed? Uh... I think we talked about them all. Okay, so um, tell me if I missed something, but I think uh, we covered everything. No? Yeah, the case, maybe we could have called the talk about the case, but uh, I'm not sure we will have the, the, a lot of time. You said yourself, I think you have to go in about 20 minutes, no? Like you had a... Oh, it's okay. If, if it's needed, I can prolong this. So one so thing I can, uh, so one thing I can recommend myself, the best case that I really love is this uh, Corsair Cube Carbid Air uh, 540. It's a case that uh, works really perfectly with uh, what we do because you can see I put uh, all the cars next to each other. There is some space for all the SSD, uh, all the hard drive here, and then basically on the other side because it's a cube. On the other side, you've got a PSU and all the SSDs. And it's great because it makes it very easy to put your hands inside this uh, config and not have everything there with like uh, the PSU uh, on the bottom. Uh, I like it because it's very uh, compact and uh, not very heavy compared to this one that is really taller and actually very heavy to, 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 to take. Uh, in comparison, in this setup, there is like uh, seven uh, hard drives, four cards, it's supposed to be the most heavy, but no, the most heavy is this one here with just three cards because it is in metal. So I really enjoy to have things more in plastic because when you have to, as I said, climb uh, all the stairs, it makes a difference. And they are also very stable. If you put them in the car, this one, I need to, to put it like horizontal. Otherwise, it will just fall. But the other ones, I can put them vertical and they don't move at all. I put uh, just one pillow between each uh, each uh, computers, and they are just perfect in that uh, regards. So, yeah, one thing regarding to computer cases, uh, if I would mention, always try to pre-plan like the worst case scenario in terms of expansion. It means that try to think a bit what's on the long term how how much GPUs you are going to have, how much hard drives you are going to have, etc. And try to think what's what the case I really need. Because the smaller the case, the harder you have, uh, the harder life you have uh, to fit all the components you want. Because you can fit four GPUs in, in very small cases, but then 
it will be very tricky to maintain. It will be very tricky to change part, and there will be overheating and all the other things. It's always good to buy a rather big computer and then have a really easy life with upgrades and with expansions and with all the other bits. What's the model that you used recently for um, one of your machines? It was a very cool one, I remember. Maybe we can just uh, actually, uh, give a link about that. Uh, I use a lot of different cases. One one of my favorite, but actually it's really, really expensive, called N2 Elite. The case itself is nearly $1,000. However, in the context of, of really powerful machine, let's say with seven GPUs and all the other bits, it's, it's really not that bad and it allows a lot of space. However, recently, if I build something for myself, I would go for much smaller case and external radiator for mentioned reasons. Like if you want to move your case somewhere, it's better to split into two pieces and move them separately rather than with one piece that weighs like 80 kilos. 80, I mean eight and zero, which is too much for one person to, to carry normally, especially for yeah, from yeah. stairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, uh, okay, good for this part. Uh, now we can just quickly talk about overclocking and fan curves. So one thing I want to show about that is how you actually uh, change your curves, okay? So uh, you can use Precision X or Afterburner. Honestly, I've got both, but I, on this machine I use Afterburner. So if I show you quick how it works, so right now, uh, I'm not doing much except streaming, so this uh, card is doing a little bit of work, but not much, and it's overclocked. If I go to pa, 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 here, in, and I go into the fans, here we've got the curve, okay? So a curve works like that. Here on the left, I've got the speed of the fan. On the bottom, I've got the temperatures. So what it says is like here, basically at 40, uh, at, at 30 degrees, we are running at 40%. This is by default, I did not touch it, okay? At 50 degrees, I'm running at 50%. Same, I think I did not really touch this. But what I change is this. So basically, the first thing you want to do is go and put the 100% of speed, not at, by default, it's around like 80 or 85. And this is crazy because it means that your fan will not run at 100% until it reach uh, a tipping point that is already too high. So what I do is that I put this 100% of the fan speed to 75 degree. So basically above 75, it's always running at 100% because I don't want it to reach too much than that. It will never reach below 75, 76. And then, uh, well here it's not really a curve, it's more like a straight line, <laughs> but uh, could be different. But anyway, basically, so you see, you can just move the points like that. You move it as you want. So 80 for me is about um, 60, 65. It's, uh, it's already enough. So basically, it's, it starts spinning faster as we uh, grow in uh, temperatures. And uh, what you want is just that uh, the 100% is about 70 or 75. It's also a matter of noise, because if now I put these points uh, quicker, uh, which will happen more often, basically uh, it will just uh, make more noise quicker. So you don't really want that. I think my configuration works pretty well. If you have other uh, recommendation uh, for you. Yeah, it, it, if you're working on equaled machine and if you want the most ability, you can actually close this fan curve and on that afterburner um, setup, uh, just press on the auto icon and tilt your, let's say, fan speed to 100%. This will force them to run at constant speed, but if you're leaving your studio and you you want to leave your machine properly cooled to make sure that it's stable and it's not losing performance, then it's quite a good solution. Yes, it makes a lot, no yes, it makes a lot of noise and it might not be perfect in the daytime, but at night, who cares? Yeah, I can do it like this and I press OK and now I will start hearing my... You can actually hear that already. Yeah. Can you? <laughs> yeah, it makes a lot of noise. So I prefer to not have it uh, like that and just like adapt to uh, the actual fan curves. And then it works best. 
wait photo yeah like that I think and where is my uh, do 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 I think the window went uh, away uh, oh yeah sorry it's there and then here it's going to respect that so okay we're good with that um, that's how you do it for overclocking actually maybe we will not really dig into this topic because uh, it could require an additional uh, discussion on that um, well, yeah, maybe maybe I have two short questions for the community, and uh, they were related to a uh, previous topic. But uh, there there was a question about uh, Ram. Uh, Valentin asked if he should move from a DDR3 to DDR4. Is there a real difference? No, actually, the difference you are not going to see because the difference is going to come uh, that you are going to change entire platform. And entire platform, that means you probably need to get uh, the new, let's say, CPU that is going to give, that is going to make much more work per cycle compared to like old generation. So, in a workstation scenario, I mean, where you have a modeling application and rendering application, you will not feel the difference between DDR3 and DDR4. However, if you have other ops, and I I have really hard time to mention those, you might notice that difference. But in general, this is not something to look for. You might not have a choice. If you're buying a new system, uh, a system it's going to be DDR4 based. It's not going to be DDR3 compatible. So you might not have a choice. But if you are building a render node and you are trying to cheap out, it's good to go like three, four generations old, get DDR3 memory and some quad core CPU. You will save a lot of money and it will be as fast as having three times more costly machine. Okay. Uh, it was, uh, there's another question. What about the UPS between the wall and the PSU to get the pure scene wave? Is that any importance? Uh, regarding to, to those spikes that happen and regarding to sine waves, uh, you can have not UPS, but there are some uh, much more cheaper devices that would, uh, let's say, equalize uh, the current that is coming from the wall. UPS is more like when you have lost electricity and want to keep your system from shutting down hardly. So, so it will probably send you a message or, or send you an email and says, hey, your system is going to be out of energy in like 50 minutes and please close your programs normally and shut down it neatly so you would not lose something. So UPS has like a different p purpose mostly and it's actually pretty costly. It's good if you have really unstable power supply from uh, let's say your grid, however, to get really good UPS for multi-GPU machines is actually a really expensive deal. And it's not needed, but it will always be a benefit for you. Okay, so it was the two main questions. I think we can move uh, on the other topics. Yep, um, <clears throat> so the, la the next topic was about a little talk about the drivers, because this is a real problem right now in the Octane community is that um, basically uh, a lot of uh, drivers are making your machine crazy and I talked with Ahmet and uh, it's not about Octane itself, it's about the drivers and proof is that these drivers sometimes are unstable even when you're not using Octane so yeah. we can maybe just have a little talk about that so people know that, that which, soft, which drivers are stable and which are required. Uh, I would say that uh, me, I use the 382.33, so I will note them. And they, yeah. are, they are pretty uh, stable. Yeah, the, the thing about drivers is that it really depends on your configuration and other applications you are using. However, for Octane Render use, we find certain versions that work most stable. However, 
with the recent release of uh, version 4, you need to upgrade those drivers and actually all our knowledge about how, how to get the most stable drivers just vanished. So currently we are testing those and I actually bought some extra gear in order to have those problems and force myself onto those problems to find those drivers. But in some cases, in some computers, in some configurations where you update Windows, you get the latest drivers. Sadly, it's still crashing and it's not the problem as you mentioned from Autoy. Just because other render engines doesn't kick into this problem, it doesn't mean that it's not a driver issue. It's sad, but Octane Render touches some, some let's say, driver functionality or something. And at this point, we do not have, it seems no one in the community really have a driver that, that would work in all scenarios. So on certain motherboards, especially on those with ELX chips or on those that has certain Windows updates, you will in a way be forced to use like all the generation of driver and uh, not the most recent build of Octane Render because otherwise you just get a bit unstable system with three or more GPUs. I try myself actually to install the, because I love to be always on experimental build and yeah. stuff and uh, honestly I'm still stuck on this uh, three version uh, 3.0 uh, test 7 but I, yeah. the, I think I am one of the only one to have this version because there is it exists a version test 7 on the forum but I've got mine directly from Amet and that's the one I use because uh, it's the most stable and it has like the uh, 10 uh, sub uh, mats into the uber mats but uh, now I cannot go on RC2 and RC3 because I need to upgrade to and I tried the the 391 doesn't work uh, it makes my computer instable I've got freeze during uh, octane render and uh, then I tried 387 and it's still freeze on the on Octane Render, so there is still a big deal about uh, drivers, and uh, the only one that I can still say that is stable is the one I mentioned, 382.33. I think, I think, if if anyone from community want to try the version four and to get it as stable as as they would like it to be, uh, the latest driver with some Windows updates uh, might fix the problem but it's not a solution on the long run. For some users, we heard that it is working for a week and then it just refreshes and then they start getting crashes. However, I haven't tested up to the level where I could say that on the clean machine that you do not install any other software, this is still a problem. Because with drivers, there is this thing that sometimes you can, let's say, install things like Dropbox, for instance, and actually Microsoft themselves uh, proved to one user and said that, hey, don't use this program, don't use this program because it's going to give you blue screen with this watchdog violation. So it's not, it's not only about the driver, it's not only about the Octane, but also about all the other software that you're running in the background. And for now, I don't. I cannot say exact how, exactly how to solve this. Apart from that, that as mentioned, I bought some ex, uh, extra hardware and still in the progress of testing this. We had a really good and stable driver before, but with version four, we're still looking for to this problem. And I think we already noticed this for Jules and others. So hopefully, we get some response from developers as well. Yep. Okay, so then maybe a little talk about uh, RNDR. Uh, maybe your best to talk about this. Yeah, render is actually a pretty interesting topic. And personally, I'm very into it. And I really like this idea from user perspective. Because let's assume you're a new user and you are building yourself a computer. And in some cases, when you're investing money and you're not sure how, how much work you're going to get in the future, you try to be on the safe side and, let's say, spend a bit less money and be a bit more cautious. So if you don't have work, you don't have too much of debt to pay. Now, what render is, it 
basically allows your computer to be used uh, in the network. You basically, as a user, can submit your computer and allow it to be used by other users. And for that, you are going to get this render token. Render token is like a small coin that you can exchange later, or you can use it to rent render power from other uh, guys on the same network. So meaning that if, if you have multiple machines, but if you are not rendering them, you can put them into work. And when you need to do work yourself, you can render with your machines and you can use the time you basically uh, allowed other people to use your machines. I mean, you will have more power on your disposal just because you allow your machines to do work when they would be sitting otherwise and doing nothing. So render network is like uh, having a big render farm that is combined from all the users around the world that has machines that are doing, let's say, mining or maybe sitting idling. And it's actually a neat concept because for us, uh, end users, it allows have, let's say, alternative stream or use our machines in a way that would accumulate render power that we can use when we need it. So it's, for me, it's really neat project and I'm really happy to see uh, Otto into this. Yeah, I wish to take part of this, but I don't know uh, when we can actually uh, get our feet into that and uh, put our machines on the network. Do you have an idea of... Uh... Uh, in order to get into this uh, whole thing, uh, there will be uh, what's known as a token sales. There already was one a few months ago. And if you buy the token there, if you buy that currency that you are going to use in order to, um, uh, let's say, render on other machines, you can now also submit your own machine into the network. Mm. So there will be another sale in the future of this. And then I think at the end of the year, we are going to have uh, this uh, render network, render as a service for broader community. It means that as you go into and uh, let's say order some render power from render farms, you will be able to, uh, to get into this render service and pay for someone. Now, how to submit your own machine, I do not know, but for now, it will be possible to do for better testers that already have some tokens bought uh, okay, in so the past few months. I missed the sale, so I missed the opportunity to submit my machine yet. That's it. Uh, I think the next sale is going to be soon after. So just look for information about that on the render token channels like Twitter and Facebook. And certainly we are going to post some information on our group as well. Seems a bit sad that uh, to give uh, your your machine, you need first to pay <laughs> because this is like not the point. But yeah, uh, but I it's, guess it's because but, you prove that you trust in the system. Yeah, but it's in a way it's a good thing because you are basically allowing those who believe and support the project, you are allowing them to test this first. So in a way, it's a it's a good thing. It's like you are getting free often render with the version four update. Why? Because you were you were paying user before. So it's actually cool. These ideas just show how company values its own users. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely something to keep an eye on uh, onto it. Yeah. All right. Um, OK, next topic uh, to talk about is that uh, I've got some uh, pretty cool uh, way to keep uh, to make savings when you buy computers because uh, as I mentioned once, um, on my last computer, every 1080 Ti, I bought them between 600 and 700 dollar. So I'm not going to tell you magic tricks. I'm just going to tell you to talk about logic stuff. I am not affiliated with anybody, so I'm not going to sell you anything. I'm just going to tell you my tricks uh, to pay less. Okay. So basically, what I use was Amazon for most of uh, my spendings because I've got a good trick about Amazon is that uh, many people forget one important thing is that you've got uh, not only Amazon of your region, you've got 
Amazon uh, in England, Amazon in Spain, Amazon in Italy, Amazon in France and in Germany, if you are in Europe. Okay. And the cool thing about that is you can actually check the price on all of them, not only on one, but on all of them, because the price are actually different and it depends about the stock. So if you check like a 1080 Ti on, uh, in France or in Germany, be sure to check also in the five other countries because you're going to find some very good stuff. Uh, that's one thing. So keep an eye on the international on Amazon, not only one country. Second thing, if you use like Amazon Prime, which is over there, if you, are, if you try it for the first time, yeah, it's uh, free and uh, you can get also the free delivery. But it's so crazy that to the point one day, uh, I, I bought a case and I receive it at home and I'm like, oh, I don't know about the color <laughs> and I could get it refined at 100 percent refined and they, they delivered it to me and then they went home to get it back. So I spent nothing. I didn't move my ass and I got it uh, actually delivered for free and back for free and uh, delivery for free is very important because if you get stuff from italia spain or whatever and it is still free delivery that's pretty in interesting okay third top third thing is this uh, plugin it's called kipa uh, there is the logo in just in front but basically uh, it's called kipa.com and this uh, cool thing is a plugin on chrome and Firefox and you can just go on Amazon and when you go there, like let's say you type uh, 1080 Ti, I go on one, no matter which, it adds a little panel here, which shows me the price history, okay? And I can uh, see how the price evolved from like January to April. And I can see that, for example, if I bought it when it was the lowest, I got it at this pricing. If I bought it now, I am pretty, I'm going to spend more than necessary. And the good thing is that you can then recognize when you are into the, the lowest of the chart or where you are into the highest. If you are in the highest, you know that it's maybe better to wait. If you are in the lowest, you know that you will probably not get better than this price. So to see this chart already is very amazing. You can see the price from Amazon official, the new, which new means like it's not Amazon directly that sells it to you, uh, it's other companies. And uh, the use is like, uh, yeah, it's pretty self-explanatory. Then what you can do is like track this product and then you say, choose your desirate price. So for example, you go around 700, okay? So now it's like a big gap. I'm, I'm looking to get it for 30% less. And then when you're good, you can also put this price into new and use or only from Amazon. Okay. And then you can click on, you, you can track multiple, uh, multiple Amazon loca locales and you can click on like .com, .ca, Europe. So in uh, .co, uh, in, in the UK, in France, in Italy, in Spain, uh, not in space, <laughs> in Spain, sorry. And uh, then you do start tracking. Okay, now I'm not logged, but uh, if I just log in right now, which I'm not going to do, whatever, and you're going to receive notification by email and also directly in the browser when the price reach this threshold. Okay, and it's very cool thing to use because uh, many times I was like also like one time I remember I was in the airplane and the airplane was not yet uh, uh, flying off. We were still waiting into the plane and boom, I receive a notification on my phone because there is an, an app for this. And uh, I was like, oh my God, like the price is exactly what I want. And during the time the airplane was moving from the ground, I was able to actually buy the card before we were in the sky. And so this kind of thing will never happen if I, I had to check myself, somebody else will have bought this uh, card. And as I said, between 600 to 700 for a 1080 Ti, today you find them not less than 1000. So it's a very big difficulty to find them. So at least you can just go on your favorite cards. You check on every locales like uh, international, French, uh, etc., etc., And you just know when you will get the best price. Of course, now I'm telling these tricks. So you will be many people <laughs> to use that. But uh, that's still very interesting. And it works not only for cars, it works for everything. You want a new chair, you want a new uh, laptop, you want to whatever you want and you think that this price is not fair, so you want to know when it will actually be a fair price. That's it. Okay. And that's uh, a neat trick to save some money. Yeah, it's a pretty cool, actually. <laughs> then, the, and also the good thing I tell you is that you get notification. So 
at the beginning we thought this uh, i already knew this trick about uh, international so i was putting all the price into a uh, google sheet but uh, amazon made it that you cannot extract the price and automatically update your google sheets so it's not possible to do that and just open your google sheet and see the updated price every time you open it it doesn't work because amazon made something in their script to force that it's not possible so every day every day or a couple times per day and because the price changed sometimes three or four times in a day so what i went is that every time i opened all the pages and i had to go on everything refresh 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 takes so long and it was all time in my mind so then when, once it was like in this, this notification system i could just just relax and just wait i get a notification very cool okay next uh i come from switzerland and in switzerland we have a very low tax okay comparison in germany and in france it's about 20 percent so you spend spend 20 percent of the price on tax and you waste a lot of money because of that in switzerland it's around seven percent okay so switzerland is pretty cool for that and there is probably other countries uh so if you know somebody in switzerland that can actually uh buy uh the stuff for you or just uh, deliver in this into this uh address <laughs> you will actually make a lot of savings or if you know any other low country tax uh advice number five if you are a non-enterprise you sometimes don't need to pay the tax or actually you can actually deduct it uh, at the end of the year so if you know if you are not an enterprise yourself but you can um, uh, if you have contacts with an enterprise it's better that they they uh, buy the stuff for you instead of you as an uh, individual uh, number six, uh, if you know a local store that is selling um, components, I did that myself. And the thing is that you can always find good, good deals with them. Because if you say, okay, look, I'm going to buy four graphic cards, a motherboard, a CPU, and all the stuff, then uh, you can have deals with them. Like uh, sometimes, for example, they, all the little cables was for free. Uh, they ch they changed the fa the, cur the the fans for free, so I got better cu uh, fans, and they did the montage for free. I don't know if you say montage, maybe assembling uh, for free, and uh, a couple of stuff like that. That usually, if you add them together, it's like one or two hundred uh, euro in addition. So you can also save uh, like this. And of course, you can do the montage by yourself, and uh, it's actually not so difficult. Honestly, um, I did it myself for the last one. You just have to open the motherboard uh, manual and uh, be careful. You just uh, watch a few videos, and you, if you learn to do it yourself once, it will be useful all your life because you're going to. Uh, it will be complicated the first time, but the next time you do it, you already know how to put the CPU, how to put the thermal paste, how to put the, the water cooling on that. The RAM is easy as a, a kid could do that. Putting the graphic cards is very easy. Uh, this is just some screws to, dry, to, to put, you know. So doing it yourself also do savings because I heard some people, they were ready to pay 300 euros for a company to build their machines. 300 wasted euros. So that's really shit also. Um, one more thing, if you want to have Windows, so Windows 10, you can type OEM, okay? And then you will find a lot of websites that actually sell this uh, license for uh, nothing. So an example here, uh, maybe that's not the best, yeah, okay, let's say, okay. This is not the website I use usually, I use another one, but I don't find the link quick. Uh, you can just say cheap and maybe you find quick one I use yeah I don't really remember maybe this one okay there is so many webs oh yeah this is the one I uh, used you see you can find actually your license in OEM for like 11 euro and like it's discounted it costs like eight instead of spending like how much it was six uh, here it's like uh, 150 euro for a license of windows you it's you can actually get it for less than 10 euro so what's the difference the difference is that usually you get the license in a box and you've got to pay for the cd and all this stuff while each if actually you get the oem oem is like the factory themselves they are using these versions so it's just like a digital license that they use and the uh, thing is that if you reinstall your motherboard or if you reinstall i think they maybe i don't remember if it's linked to the motherboard of the cpu 
but basically if you change one of them you get to repay for it the only thing you can actually say is like uh, it costs nothing at all you don't care and this is a, a valid license it's not like uh, cheating it's not illegal it's really uh, working fine and you get uh, you pay nothing for windows instead of cracking it or instead of uh, instead of uh, paying so much you just get it for like less than 10 euro it costs nothing uh last thing to say also was like to um to to be careful of the black friday and the cyber monday that comes the, the monday next to the black friday and <clears throat> you will not find everything for cheaper like for example the best graphic cards you can forget to get a discount but if you want to buy like a ssd i saw sometimes one terabyte ssd from samsung half the price instead of 300 what like what it was like 150 and if you can buy it at this moment this is perfect of course now we are in april this thing is happening in november so but if you see this video later on the year it will probably be useful for you to remember that uh, you just type cyber monday uh, on google and uh, you will find the date in 2018 it will be the 26th november Alright, uh, last uh, little trick to tell you about the pricing is one that mentions, uh, mentioned uh, Tom before is the thing that you can also buy uh, previous generations. So you don't need to buy the latest generation, you can buy a previous one and make a lot of savings while uh, the performance can be the same. So on a particular case, not on every case, but it's still a very good thing to check the previous generation and not to always take the, light, the latest. Just an example, when I first bought the DDR4 for one of my computers, I paid double price than what I paid for my second machine. Same amount of RAM, same thing, twice more expensive because I was in a rush and I wanted to get this uh, new computer now and I paid too much for it. So that's my little tricks for um, spending less. And uh, all together, I was able to get my machines. And as an example, so it was like uh, up this kind of machines here. Uh, all of them costed me between uh, four thousand and five thousand. Uh, sorry, between um, five thousand and five thousand five hundred, which is a very good price for four GPU uh, that has like uh, ten eighty Ti into the machine. I know many people who, for the same thing, they will spend eight thousand. Here, I got them less for less than six thousand, you know, dollar. So, it's a good thing. If you follow a bit this advice, you can get a uh, good savings for sure. All right, that's all for me about this. And if you guys know uh, other tricks, <laughs> that's welcome. I think you said uh, everything <laughs> about <laughs> all the tricks. Right. Yeah, they are. So, really clever way to, to spend your money. And if you have now like uh, questions that we can uh, finally answer, and after that we we are good. I think it was like super complete. We didn't have any other questions. Uh, my only and main question uh, wa was um, already uh, answered by Tom. It was about um, drivers. Yeah, drivers. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a huge topic because uh, many people are silent, and um, yeah, we we are just so so excited to test out the new version, and we feel yeah. very frustrated at the moment. But uh, we hope that uh, it will uh, it will come. So I invite every people having problems just to be yeah. really really nice with NVIDIA, just open a ticket, explain everything clearly, be nice with the guy, and I think it will help them to understand what's the problem and on what they should focus. Uh, company needs some time to have a lot of feedback, and if you stay silent and just go back on an old driver, they can't solve the problem, and uh, if few people only tells a problem for the company it will be a small problem and i think it's a huge one because uh, most uh, of the people i know have this problem i just don't i just saw a question on the live and i just edited my thing he asked what's the best uh, nvidia driver for 307 and actually that's the same as 308 this one yeah. looks great yeah okay 
All right, so uh, if guys you have last questions at the moment, and otherwise, uh, if Tom, you've got also something to say before leaving, maybe some stuff that you have used to get questions about and uh, that you don't want well, to answer every time. A lot of questions are very straight to point about certain directions that users take and they are more, let's say, subjective and because we have this conversation about general things, I don't think I have something to add. Just probably mention one thing that is really important. Don't just blindly buy the newest stuff that you might not even need. Always start to think from like, what are your needs? What are you going to do? How much of RAM? How much of VRAM? How much of render power you need? And also add on top like, what are your future plans? Uh, and when you have this in mind, everything will fall into places because when you have your needs, you can ask for help and you will always get like straight to point answer. And when you ask open questions like what's the best computer, like what's the best for who? For the one who has $2,000 or for one who has $20,000? Yeah. That's a diff different topic. So always be straight to point about your needs and that will help a lot for those who will give you advice. This is a super, a super nice topic because uh, for the fun fact, I have two computers. One is cheap and the other is really expensive. And the cheap, the cheaper is the faster on After Effects. And to do some client works for After Effects, I need to move back on my older computer. So if you want to just do After Effects and and things, do not buy a, a four GPU uh, with a many RAM because uh, an older computer just will work better. So yeah, as Tom said, just think smart and take something for your needs. And learn how to optimize a scene. <laughs> exactly. That's probably the most important thing. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, it makes a huge difference in the same material. Yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. So Tom, it was an amazing pleasure to have you with us. Really yeah, my awesome. pleasure, guys. It's, I've been waited for like a couple months now that we find all the time to make this. And before I was in Berlin, so my internet was crazy bad. I had the Wi-Fi from the neighbor, so it was so, so so instantly bad. So now I'm happy. I've got like the fever, and we could make this. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's really cool. You're always like a good uh, inspiration for everybody. To uh, when it comes to like this uh, computer parts, you're really good about. Uh, um, yeah, just like everything, so it was really great to have you on this talk, and uh, I'm sure this video can help like a lot of people to to get back to it later and learn things. So yeah, and if you have like any questions, feel free to discuss them on on our groups, and we will help for you to to find the best deal and the best solution that fits your needs. Just be open with what you need and and what you have and what you are looking to achieve, and I think there is always a solution for everyone. You just might need a bit of help from from those who use the program, and it's okay to ask. It's it's not bad to, to not know everything. I mean, so we are open community, and we are all in the same boat. So I hope this problem with the drivers and other thing will get solved soon, and we can share some information with you guys. Yeah. Cheers. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Bye.